This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. This episode is brought to you by Harry's Razors. Love Harry's Razors. Harry's Razors. Harry's Razors. There'll be some singing later. You'll hear it. <laughs> you, you won't like it, but you'll hear it. You will not like it. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday, with me as always, my co-host, Nick Mason. Merry pre-Christmas, everyone. Unless you're listening after Christmas, in which case, go fuck yourself. No, sorry. That was rude, wasn't it? <laughs> no. No, it wasn't. It was the exact reaction they deserve. Good. For waiting until after <laughs> the best days of the holiday season to listen to a podcast. <laughs> No, we appreciate people listening anytime. This yeah. will probably be one of those back catalogue ones, I'd imagine, actually. This is, you know, Star Wars episodes, oh, but yeah, they get that's a lot true. of play over Listen, time, yeah. uh, let us know if uh, if you are, this week you listen to this at the Christmas dinner table. Yes. Like, you're just like, I don't want to deal with I this anymore. I don't want to deal with that uncle. You know that uncle? Yeah, you know that uncle, yeah. For whatever reason, everybody has one. Yep. And they're all weird for vaguely the same reasons. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm, <laughs> we won't yeah. get into it. So. Just put your AirPods in, <laughs> yeah. whatever you have, and just... That's uh, right. Yeah. Just tune out, man. Have a good time, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, I just wanted to quickly mention up top, first of all, Merry Christmas to you, Mason, and to yeah. all our listeners. Oh, sorry, Happy Holidays, because, you know... Cause <laughs> James, we're, we're, James. I'm bringing it back. I was going to say, oh, you're bringing Happy Holidays <laughs> That's back. right, yes. It was gone, <laughs> yeah. but me, the PC police, are oh, bringing it back. Oh, my goodness. I'm sick of Christmas time. I... You I know, wondered why there were all the squad cars outside. <laughs> yeah, when yeah, I got yeah that's for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're my armored militia that I've paid for, funded by this podcast. So thank you, everybody who's contributed. We mm. really appreciate so it. So wait, what are we bringing back? Happy holidays or we bring back Whichever happy- Whichever what I said. Okay, <laughs> that's what right. I'm bringing uh-huh. back, yeah. yeah. Uh, just wanted to also mention, Claire and I were on an episode of Book Cheat this week uh, on oh, 12th right. Night. Yeah, it was actually a lot of fun. Uh, and if what do you mean below. actually a lot of fun? Well, because Dave, you know, he's a nerd. He's oh, a book yeah. nerd. Oh, good point. But you made it fun. <laughs> no, I understand. He yeah. makes it fun. It's a terrific show. It's like a do go on spin off. And uh, I, I'll, rec- I'll, I'll I recommend it, and it's uh, in general. Sure. But I'll link our, our episode below. It's weird though; you've never recommended it before, no, and now gonna, you're on it. Yeah, that's you're right. Recommending it. Yeah, yeah. Makes a lot of sense. It does make yeah. a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. You want some news? Yeah. Okay. Good. Oh, if you're here for Star Wars time codes, you can jump ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, we'll do non-spoilers then. Spoilers. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Mm. But in the meantime, the news. So James Cameron. Uh, he said this about Avatar re-releasing in cinemas okay. because he is doing that. Is this a ploy? It's in preparation for Avatar 2 in 2020,000, whenever that movie <laughs> yes. No, it's 2021, uh-huh. this December it's coming yeah, out. Yeah, right. He said, uh, this is in regards to it topping Endgame's box office That's numbers. what I thought, a ploy. He said, I think it's a certainty. But let's give Endgame their moment and let's celebrate that people are going to the movie theatre. So he's saying that with the re-release of Avatar, it's going to take it from the 2.79 billion up to the 2.97 that Avatar made to dethrone it in the box office. So this is a certainty in his in That's his mind. That's what he says. Huh. Uh, do you want to know the exact amount of money he will need? I sure. calculated it roughly. I okay. Think. But so th- this might be. But very then I was wrong. dealing with billions, and I'm like, these zeros seem wrong. Right? You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I just couldn't. It's the amount of money that I'm as I'm doing it. I'm like. People have this kind of money. What would you leave? I don't even know. Submarines. Oh, submarines, of course, yeah. yeah. What you, if It's much easier if you if you calculate it in terms of how many submarines you could purchase with that amount of money. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, but don't tax the rich. Let them do what they want. That's right. Don't tax them at the same amount as literally everybody else. That yeah. is what I'm saying also. It's PC gone mad because we'll all get a billion dollars one day. I and say tax them not at all. You know, it'll <laughs> yeah. trickle down somehow. <laughs> That's right. Something. But he'll that'll need to make $59,944,264. Well, that's not a lot in terms of how much a new release blockbuster yes. movie might make. But when did Avatar come out? 2009. Okay, so be, 10 years ago. Yeah, more by the time... Uh, I do the math, but there's too many zeros. It'll be more by the time. It'll be just before Avatar Two, I assume. Yeah, right. And everybody's seen it. It's possible. Yeah. But also, even if it happens, which I'm, I'm highly dubious mm-hmm. of. Does that? Wait, does what that, are you dubious about? That it making this amount of money or just coming out? In no, no, it'll well? come out. But that uh-huh. that it it'll that that counts when you re-release a movie. Uh-huh. Does that generally count as the the original box office numbers? I understand for like the Star Wars special edition, for example. Uh-huh, yeah. That's like a different thing, right? Sure. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dif- worse, different, whatever you want to call Literally it. Literally right? a different movie. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. But do you, do you know what I'm saying though? Like, yeah, it's yeah. just yeah, okay. I mean, what do I care? They're both Disney properties. It matters nothing to me at all whether it. It's less or more or whatever. Oh, is, it, is Avatar a Disney? Yeah, movie? got bought out with the Fox. Well, it, well, then in that case, I would imagine Disney. 
are going to put a huge marketing push behind it. So it probably will mm. make that money back. Yeah. Okay. Can, is, is the deal here that they're missing one slot on the top box office movies of all time or something like that? I don't believe they, so. I think they're okay, all... Right. I think it's like... It's all Disney and Titanic now. Okay, I right. Think is, okay. And maybe... I don't know who owns Titanic, but I don't okay. think it's Disney. So what they're doing is they're releasing... They're re-releasing Avatar to get on James Cameron's good side so they can purchase Titanic from whoever owns Titanic Correct. currently. And then every movie that is at the highest box office rankings of all time will be Disney movies. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. So I've got here, um, I can I can bring this up for you if Please you do, do on the list. Uh, well, this is from May, so that's I need an updated one. And of course there's also inflation, et cetera, and so uh -huh. forth. But uh, Well, we're not smart enough to handle that, so not. just give us raw uh, numbers. Avengers Endgame. Yes, I've heard of it. Followed by Avatar. Though this it's got here, it says that Endgame is the number is only ten million more than Avatar. Oh, so or a little bit less actually. So the numbers I took from I think it was Box Office Mojo might not actually be correct. But then again, this is Wikipedia, so whatever. <laughs> uh, so it's Endgame, Avatar, then it's Titanic, then it's Force Awakens, then it's Infinity War. Okay. Those are the top five, and then it's Jurassic World, which is Paramount okay. or Universal, sorry, and then it's The Lion King, Avengers. And then Furious 7. So three of these aren't, in the top ten, aren't Disney. Only a matter of yeah, time, though, isn't point. it? Yeah, well, it really is. <laughs> you ain't wrong, mate. So, look, if it's 10 million, yeah, that'll make that. And they could easily spend that on mark, like more than Well, exactly. Does it even count? They should have to factor in how much money they're spending to promote it. Yeah. Like, if it takes them 10, if, if they only need to, let's say they need to uh, make 59 million to, to bump Endgame off, mm. and it takes them, uh, give, they do uh, 60 million in marketing. Yeah. Shouldn't count. Yeah. No, I don't disagree with that. But then again, James Cameron should have to write the, a novelty check for $1 million. Do you then take and off give it the, to me? the $500 million of marketing that Endgame did, though? Yes. Because then you, because then that would bring it definitely below Av um, Avatar, because Avatar didn't have that. Yes. Not marketing, like cost in general. I'm oh, right. saying. Uh -huh. Sorry, yeah. Also, uh, the production companies behind Titanic, no one cares, but Paramount, <laughs> Lightstorm Entertainment, and 20th Century Fox. So Disney also have a piece of Titanic. So there you oh, go. Oh, perfect. A literal piece. Yeah. They put it in Bob Iger's office. <laughs> well, <laughs> He's rich. He's rich. Yeah. What do they get up to, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? The rich aren't like me and you, Mason. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, that's pretty, that's okay. Good yeah. times. There you go. Do you think people are going to go out in droves to watch Avatar? I mean, if it's, if it's immediately before Avatar 2, yeah. I'm sure there are people who haven't seen it. Of course. Youngsters. You youngsters. Know? That's it. Just yeah. young people. Just youngsters. Yeah. And they're very old. Also, just watch it on your phone. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> The way Martin Scorsese intended it to, to be watched. That's how he wants Avatar watched. <laughs> As a bit of a sweet revenge. That's right. Or in VR. He's a big fan for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. The Tanet trailer. Oh, yeah. Time travel and secret organisations and uh, bombs or not bombs. <laughs> secret uh, world ending plots. Yes. Uh, some sort of time travel mechanic that I don't understand yet, yeah. nor may I ever understand it. Uh, Christopher Nolan's back, baby. And uh, now you are, you like Nolan's movies in general. I right? do. I like Inception especially. So this is called. I'll, I'll just read you the um the synopsis. Okay. It's set in the afterlife of the world of international espionage. It follows Washington's operative uh, as he races against the clock to prevent World War Three. Though it's unclear exactly how his character was recruited for the job, it seems to require some trademark Nolan time hoops. That is from the LA Times. I've realised that is not a. That's not the. No, it's not on the poster. No, that's th what they've done there is they've done some rampant speculation, a la what we we yes. do. So really, they've just just done our job for us. That's so right. So thank you, the LA Times. We appreciate it. So I mean, it's intriguing and it's kind of I don't need to know really anything else going yeah, into this. Yeah, for sure. Something about you, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll what do you think it. the time travel mechanic is? I don't know. Because it seems it, to be is the is it weaponized time travel? Is that what it is? I don't know because we don't see any devices in this. No, like even even in the Inception trailer, I think we did see the 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 dream box. Yeah. So in this, I don't the know. The Inception yet. ray. Yeah, the Inception ray. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it kind of reminds me of that game Control that came out. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's got that kind of feel and aesthetic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But, but this, this also seems way cheaper. I think maybe Nolan's gone. You know what? I want to do something Inception like again, mm. but way cheaper. So yeah. what about if I just reverse the film? Ah, but then <laughs> you've got to film the car spinning from a different angle. You haven't thought about this, Mason. That's still you need two cameras. Oh, that's true. It's not cheap, and yeah. they should take that cost out of the money it makes. Obviously. I agree. <laughs> of two cameras. Let's get real, folks. Yeah. I'm turning my chair around and I'm <laughs> straddling it. Let's talk real figures, folks. Yeah. So I think it's out. Yeah, mid year. Okay. I, what I like about Christopher Nolan is because he made the Batman trilogy, he can just do whatever he wants. Some people see it. Yeah. I find that 
like kind of refreshing. That's where true. he's not beholden to anybody or tied into a franchise. Is not that does I'm, his stuff make big money or does it make enough money? To makes get enough by? money. Yeah. Okay, right. I mean, like Inse- at Inception, they all make money. They yeah. all make money. But like that, I feel like. For, I mean, mostly does them with Warner Brothers, I believe. They're like their big budget art house movies that they're, yeah, that they're right, just happy right. to kind of throw money at. And, mm-hmm. and, and like they're not going to do $2 billion, but they'll do good enough and yeah. bring prestige to the cinema and whatever. Exactly. Yeah, bring the prestige to the cinema, a re-release. It's <laughs> taken the top spot, yeah. Mason. It's going for it. Nice. Yeah. So in a way, uh, Christopher Nolan is very similar to Kevin Smith. Yes, they'll that's just, right. Just let him do his thing. Yep. And, uh, one is Nazi sausages and one is... Whatever Kevin Smith is doing now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to see Jade Silent Bob. It'd be nice if it came out at some point it would here. Be, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Has it been? Has it been and gone in I America? Think it has. Oh, or it's okay, touring right. still? Maybe. No, it wouldn't be now. It would have finished by now. Oh, it's just showing in like a. Well, you know how he does the tours on the like he goes to different cities. Yeah, and right, like, right. And he uh-huh. releases it. Yeah. It's like in a little carnival caravan. Exactly. He just opens it in a town square and. <laughs> Step right up, folks. Uh, So, Kamal Nanjiani, a man like me and you, Mm. one would think. But with one crucial difference. What's that? Acting. Money. Acting. Yep. Yep. Comedic timing. Silicon Valley. He got out of the podcasting game to do something much better. At just the right time. Yes. (laughs) All those things. All that one thing. He, like us, was once shilling loot crates. That's right. (laughs) We've both moved on from that. Yes. To varying successes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but he's posted uh, an image to his Instagram of... Uh, his, he's his, broken his the internet. Bod, his new bod. Mm. There, were, there were hints that like he'd got kind of, you know, he'd, he'd changed. Because you see him in Silicon Valley and... On stage oh, he's always, like, is he always wearing like long sleeves. Yeah, and you see, and I'm, I'm looking like looking at his arms and people, I saw people had posted stuff like, what's going on with this guy? Why Does he, he kind of walk like... <laughs> a brick. Like a brick, exactly. Like yeah. a pile of bricks with legs. That's right. Yeah, so uh, do you want me to read the post you put about it? Yes. Or do you want to discuss it before I read that? No, no, I think it's fine. Okay, Go cool. Ahead. I never thought anyway, I'd... more like Kumail Rigiani. Very good. We don't see his, see his dick. Though, no, we so. don't, yeah. yet. <laughs> I never thought I'd be one of those people who would post a thirsty sh- shirtless, uh, but I've worked way too hard for this for too long, so here we are. With a die hero, you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. I found out a year ago I was going to be in Marvel's Eternals and decided I want to transform how I looked. Uh, I would not have been able to do this if I didn't have a full year with the best trainers and nutritionists paid for by the biggest studio in the world. I'm glad I look like this, but I also understand why I never did. It would be impossible without this, uh, these resources and time. So big thanks to any names, various, various people, including his oh. wife and, uh, and um, Emily V. Gordon, who, of course, does he wrote the big sick with him and that is his wife. stuff? Yes, okay. uh, yes. Is it not? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. I thought. Yeah. And he's various trainers over the years. So yeah. First of all, I think this is um, really good marketing. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Because everything is <laughs> everything is marketing. Because everybody's <laughs> talking about it, but only us. Only we've seen through <laughs> we've, this. We've figured we've it out. We've figured it out. Yeah. Everybody else is talking about it on their podcast. Yes. Talking about how this is great for the Eternals and yes. it's, oh my God, he's going to look great in the movie, the Eternals, Marvel's coming The Eternals. Whatever year, whatever coming month it comes soon out. And yeah. Yeah, we're going yeah, we're going to really enjoy The Eternals, but we've seen through that. Yeah. We see you really super buff, super ripped, <laughs> Kamal Nanjiani in The Eternals yeah. coming in, whatever year you, it's coming out. But people also are saying he's a hero for saying like, this is impossible unless you're kind of, uh-huh. you've got the resources to do it. Well, he's not wrong. Yeah, I unless mean, it's, unless it's your job. I mean, it's always Sunny did it first. If we're honest, That's what I was going to say, yeah, it, it, pretty much, Mac a, went from Fat Mac, Mac was to, just to like, ripped Mac. I, I barely did this with time and money, and yeah, I, still, right. I still barely managed to do it. But yeah, anyway, it's interesting and depressing, isn't it, Mason? <laughs> Is it depressing? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> Is it? How would any of us look that good, Mason? But is it is it good though? Do you know what I mean? How do you mean? Like, is it a good look? Like, I think it's what I read a study this week that was like guys look at guys' chests more than women do at guys' chests. Right. It's one of those things like guys looking at other guys, like comparing themselves and and that kind of thing. And and women are all about like. Did you read that or did your wife say that? Did she go, <laughs> James? It's okay. Guys look at. Guys' chests more than women look at guys. Don't worry. She did say that, yeah. Stop crying, James. And then she sent me this article that was just in a Word document <laughs> <laughs> on her computer. <laughs> Weird. Look, I brought up this document. Here's my laptop. <laughs> this is from Cool Dudes Health Magazine. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Eternals. Uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I think mm. it's my the one I'm looking forward to the most next year yeah, right. as far as Marvel movies go. Mm. Yeah. Anyways, we've got another trailer for Top Gun Loser. Maverick's back. He hasn't progressed very far in life. I mean, sure, he looks incredible, 
Like yeah. he looks better than anybody else. Besides Kamal Nanjiani, yes, obviously. obviously. Yeah, but looks then like not a the same sack, Looks like a sack of potatoes next <laughs> yeah, to Kamal that's right. Nanjiani. <laughs> that's true. Uh, what I noticed about this, obviously, is that um, Whiplash, Miles Teller is in it. He's oh, got a little okay, mustache because right. he's Anthony Edwards' <laughs> son. Just call him the odometer like we all do. <laughs> the odometer. Because he's a Miles uh, Teller. Oh, very good. I thought yes. you meant because he was doing like a tss, 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 but that's a different thing. That's I was thinking thing. of um, a metronome. That metronome, thank yes. you. Well, I'm going to call in the metronome. <laughs> okay, good. So the metronome uh, looks a lot like Anthony Edwards kind of did. From that original Top is that, Gun. Is he meant to be his kid? Yes, his son, ah, son okay, of Goose. Right. right. Yeah. Is this movie going to be exclusively Tom Cruise sort of walking <laughs> wistfully around planes while sad music? And being better at planes? Yeah, right. <laughs> than everybody else. In theory, he's the best combat pilot we've ever seen. <laughs> In theory. In theory. <laughs> yeah. So I guess because there were rumours it was going to be about drones and stuff, but I'm glad it's not. Maybe it is, though, because at the end there is a sort of... At the last sort of 20 seconds, there's sort of what appears to be an actual combat scenario. Yeah. Maybe he's fighting drones. Yeah. Because who's he fighting in this? He's he fighting fight- the plane from the movie Stealth. Oh, my goodness, it's back. <laughs> is that the, the plane that <laughs> The one that was sentience? struck by lightning. Yeah, and became, okay, and became a deadly killer plane. Yeah, pretty yeah. good. Mm-hmm. No, I, I mean, maybe it is, yeah. I didn't know. Mm, uh, all the Russians? All the Ruskies. Because you can again, can't you? I guess. The Russians were our friends, or were they? But now they're our enemies, or are they? Yes. <laughs> Definitively, yes. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's cool that they influence world affairs. I think that's really cool. <laughs> it's fun. But also, yes. it's PC gone mad. To, it, it's to not, to, to, you should just let them do it. I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, excited for Top Gun or Top <laughs> Bum? Top Fun or Top Bum? What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Here we okay. go. <sighs> Look, I mean, there's always a chance for it to be Top Fun. <laughs> yes. but based on this... I just feel like it might be top bum, you know. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, Why which is bad in this instance. Yes, you know. Uh, what's the um? Who's the d- director? Do you know? No. Yeah, why why would I know? Why did I ask you that? Why would I know? Uh, Joseph Kaczynski, who I think he did uh, that one. Yeah, he did Oblivion, which I call and Tron Legacy. Your favorite. Oh, I movie. like Tron Legacy. Okay. I like Oblivion. All right. So there you go. I'm glad this guy's doing more stuff yeah. because I feel like he's made some stuff that's like people are like, eh, uh-huh. Tron, yeah, and didn't do super well, but that's good. I'm glad. Mm. Yeah. That's actually it for news. Okay, right. Well, we should talk more about Maverick then. Nah, let's just... <laughs> okay. Look, I figure we just will do an ad. <laughs> okay. And then we'll just move on to the next thing because why are people here, really? To talk about Maverick. Talk about Maverick? Yeah, talk about Maverick. Talk about Maverick. Volleyball. Mm. Jennifer Con- Connolly's on his motorbike. Yeah. He's zooming about. They're having fun. Was she in Top Gun 1? She no, wasn't. they've replaced um, the lead Kelly. female. Because the woman who he was... Uh, the love interest of then yes. is aged like a real person. So like they can't use in the same on the same scale as he's aged, one year per year. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly, yeah, right. Well, yeah. then obviously you got got to get rid of her. I mean, Jennifer Connelly would be she'd be close to fifty, wouldn't she? No. Yeah, maybe. She, I reckon. Well, she's she's an eighties star. I mean, other. I mean, she's also been a star beyond that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's forty nine. Oh, there you go. Yeah, shove it up your ass, Mason. <laughs> Top bum to you, I say. Wow. Yeah. How old's Tom Cruise? Fifty six. I want to okay, say. All right. That's okay. That's I reasonable. Exactly. That's well, a, that's a, that's a not okay. As long as as long 57. as fifty seven. Right. Okay. How is this prick twenty years older than us? <laughs> I mean, magic. Because he demons. looks younger than us. Is that why? Is <laughs> yes. that what you're saying? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, that's good that it's a woman who is forty nine and yeah. not a woman who is thirty. You know? It's not as cool though, is it? No, nah, it's not cool. <laughs> I mean, he flies planes and everything. Imagine Come on. if he was dating Miley Cyrus. Wouldn't that oh be cool? Oh my though? god. <laughs> You know, Tom Cruise's wives are all the same age when he married them. They're all like exa- They're all like twenty eight. They were all twenty eight. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, eventually we're going to learn that that's the age that he murdered his first <laughs> first wife that we don't know about. Secret first wife. Yeah, yeah. she was okay. twenty eight. Then he murdered her, and then he's like, "Well, got to replace her immediately. <laughs> Get my boys on it." <laughs> I just want to quickly say the what if, what if is going to be ten episodes, the Marvel season. Oh yeah, that's right. So, which is more than the other ones, which are like six or eight or nine, less. Less. I don't know the number, uh-huh. but less. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're pretty right. sure. Thanks. And they've already got ideas for season two, I think they said. Kevin Feige might have said that this week. Yes. Yes. He would. They would. They'd have to. Because yeah. I was trying to think about it. But they're animation, called, they're, they're gonna... called the what-if comics. Yes, that's that were, right. That ran for decades. Well, so, but they're yes. also kind of, they're more um, they're more MCU based. Well, yeah. But uh-huh. yeah, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. But they are based on comic books. That's true. Mm-hmm. I didn't even think of that. That's right. Yeah. 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 Sh- 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 shaving. Turn and make a shave. Harry Shavers. I did that before the uh, we started recording. Mm-hmm. How could I not? 
included in this ad spot for Harry's Razors. Oh my God. It doesn't feel as genuine. Yeah, it's much worse. It's <laughs> attack at this point, isn't it really? But I think it's a great time to talk about Harry's Razors, don't you? Mm-hmm, yeah. Because my experience with Harry's Razors is fantastic. Smooth, clean shave, obviously. Great handle. Mm-hmm. Shush your shavers. Yes. Turn and make a shave. Yes. Mm-hmm. Harry's Razors and so on. Yeah, for sure. But also they make a terrific gift this holiday season. Sure, Christmas is coming up. But maybe you've forgotten someone. You're like, oh, my God, I forgot to get somebody a gift or whatever. You can get one of these still. Or just get it for yourself. Or just get it at any point if you want to raise a mason. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Why limit yourself to the holiday yeah. season? Buy someone a gift every any time of year. Any time of year. How much would you appreciate a gift for no reason? Someone just went, yeah, I bought you this. You'd be like, what's up? What have this you done? This is a trick. What have you done? What person I know have you either slept with or murdered? Right? What are you up to? <laughs> and, why, and why do you think... This, of all things, would make up for it. Oh, it's a Harry's razor. Oh, these are great. Oh, I forgive you, they'd say. The thing is as well, gifts often get dull. You can do like socks, wallets and ties or whatever. Sure, whatever, whatever. But Harry's razors never get dull, ever. That's Well, they eventually obviously, but surprisingly they last a very long time in terms of quality. Mm -hmm. Uh, They also make, and the reason is because they're German engineered and award winning. They're backed by a 100% guarantee. So if you don't love the shave, you can get a full refund. It's a great deal for you and him, it says. Him Mm. being the person you buy it for. Oh, yeah. Uh, start, holiday sets also start at just $20. That's a bargain. Uh, and that's within Secret Santa limits. And Harry's Blade refills are as low as $2 each, so you guys will save money over time. That's certainly within Secret Santa limits. You oh, can be like, yes. I got you this Harry's Razors refill. <laughs> <laughs> it was only $2, and they'll be like, thanks. thanks. <laughs> I mean, great razors, obviously. I mean, obviously, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that sounded sarcastic, but that's actually the best, the best present anyone's <laughs> ever received here in this office. And then everyone will try to fight them for it. That's right. Uh, it also comes in ready to gift, handsome holiday gift box. And 1% of each sale is donated to charitable organizations. As a special offer for fans of the show, we're partnered with Harry's to give you $5 off any shave set, Ooh. including the limited edition holiday set when you go to harrys.com slash weekly planet. Each Harry's shaving set comes with a weighted handle uh, with the option to engrave, five blade razor cartridges, foaming shave gel for a rich lather, travel cover to protect your blades, and package in a handsome holiday gift box. So all you need to do is go to harrys.com slash Weekly Planet, that's harrys.com slash weekly planet. Helps the show, helps your face and your legs. Maybe you're shaving your legs. That's yeah. cool. That's fine, man. Shave any part of your body with hair on it. That's right. Yeah. Keep it smooth. That's right. <laughs> Keep it smooth. That's what we say, the Weekly Planet Keep podcast. It smooth. Keep it All smooth. Right. Uh, should we be on with the show? I think we should on with the show. Right, we'll on with the show. All right, on with the show. Star Wars Episode Nine, everybody. The Rise of Skywalker. Mm. Uh, this will be a shock to almost nobody, but it flopped in China, as all Star Wars movies always do. Because of the ghosts. Because of the ghosts. Mm. Yeah, so China, as this, this is not really that relevant to uh-huh. this review, but China didn't get Star Wars when it first came out, so they have no nostalgia for it, so they just always tank. It's quite funny. Interesting. <laughs> so that's a, that's a good kind of a good barometer. Yeah. Like if something's not being powered by nostalgia, how mm. does it do? Yeah. Not well, evidently. It turns out. Okay. Uh, so the other thing is, as far as box office openings go, pe- there was talk that like, is this one going to flop? Because, mm. you know, The Last Jedi was controversial and Solo bombed and et cetera and so forth. It's going to make between 175 and 200 million in the US opening weekend, which is That's a, a huge opening, mm-hmm. but it's also behind The Last Jedi's $220 million and The Force Awakens $248 million. Interesting. So... It, De- they, a declining return on investment there. That's right. Our investment. That's right, our investment. Uh, the response has been mixed critically. The response to it in general is varied, and it's too mm. early to kind of get an idea of, like, the, the Rotten Tomatoes user score is high, the Metacritic is, is lower. There's mm-hmm. I can't really get a handle on it this far in what the general consensus is, but yeah. I would say... It's more positive on the fan side than it is the critic side, I yeah, would Yeah, I would say. agree with that, yeah. yeah. There's I, a lot of people out there going, I don't know if I like this. I should watch it again. Yes, that's, that's how right. they get you. That's how they get you, yeah. Well, that's the thing. A lot of the times when these movies do well, it's repeat business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there's a number of reasons why this did less. Mm-hmm. There probably is a sense of a but slight th- sense of Star Wars fatigue in general. Yeah. That being said, this is not a bomb. This is still a massive success. Yeah, right. I need to point that out. I think the response to The Last Jedi probably has a little bit to do with it. Well, he's, and that's what's interesting. I think is also that people's perception of why it's going to not doing as well. It depends. Is, on, in, is entirely yeah. dependent on whether you, you like the last to Jedi. It. It's or like not. going into a dark side cave. Yeah, right. What do you bring to it? Um, I brought like a like a life size replica of Darth Vader. Yeah. And then you chop its head off. Really? And then its face explodes, and your own face is there. You bring that with you, but they have one of those in there. Yeah, I know. It's awkward. <laughs> 
I'm like, should I use So your... he comes out of the shadows and you're like, I've got this. You yeah, can... yeah, just don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> and he's like, do I still get paid for this? And I'm like... No, obviously. Yeah, I brought, I brought my own. <laughs> it says B-Y-O-D-V-C. C, yeah, exactly. Yeah. W-E-H <laughs> with exploding head. <laughs> What's happened? We've already, I've already lost the thread. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, it's, it's mm. so... I think there are people out there who are going to be like, well, it didn't do well because... People hated the Last Jedi, and they're, and they're expecting this yeah. to do too poor. You know, it's going to be a, just as bad. So uh, yeah. I'm not going to go see it. And I'm sure there's also people who are going. Well, I don't think this one's very good, and word yes. spread that it's not very good. So I'm not going to watch and, it or and you, recommend it. And you know, I think it could also be a factor. Return of the Jedi did really well comparatively to Empire Strikes Back. I think uh-huh. it did a little bit better from memory, uh-huh. but I think that was also because Empire Strikes Back ended on a cliffhanger, yes. and the Rise of Skywalker didn't. It just kind of like. Do you mean the Last Jedi? Sorry, and the last year I didn't. Yeah. Spoiler alert: the, Spoiler rise alert. Of, the rise of Skywalker doesn't end on a cliffhanger. That's right. So I think that we didn't spend three years like they did in the eighties. Yeah, right. Being like, what is going to happen? To it fashion. Was just for, yeah, that's right. What am I going to do with all these snap bands? Bad was that the eighties? Yeah, that was maybe. Yeah. Uh-huh. What are we going to do with these hypercolor t-shirts? I think that was the nineties. Well, what what are we going to do? How are we going to get them ready for the nineties? Thank you. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so I think that was also a factor. I yeah, think right. there's a number uh-huh. of factors, but also again, these numbers aren't final. Yeah. And there'll there'll be a drop off as there always is after opening week. And, and there's going to be a drop yeah. off once they instigate my new rule of you have to take away the marketing budget. And yes. Then you see how much a movie is really 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 worth. worth yeah. yeah. Anyways, we're going to do non spoilers then spoilers. What did you think of this movie? Uh, look, finales are difficult, aren't they? They certainly are. It's difficult to just... Especially when there was already a finale of sorts in the yeah, last one. Yeah, right? Yeah. Hmm. There's some things in this that I that I really liked. Uh-huh. And I'll come back to that in spoilers. But overall, I found this pretty kind of flat and underwhelming as a, as a film. Hollow. Yeah. A lot of people have said hollow, and yeah. I feel... I, I agree with that. I think I said when we did the, the video... Mm. Uh, that for a lot of people, this is going to check every box to make a great Star Wars movie. Yes. And for, for other people, it just checks boxes. And to me, I felt like it just checked boxes for two hours. Yeah, right. And it was like, okay, we've got to get this person to do this. We've got to get this person to say this. Mm. We've got to fulfill a destiny. Yeah. We've got to go to a planet. We've got to see all, a bit of fan service. Yes. When I say a bit of fan, fan service, I mean a lot of fan service. Sure. And then then end. Easter egg video linked below if people want to check oh, it out. Oh, good stuff. Well. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Was that stressful? Mitch is editing it, so no. Okay, For great. him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh-huh. Look, w- one thing that I feel like about whether you like The Force Awakens, whether you like The Last Jedi, I feel like at least in those movies, it felt like everybody was acting. Sure. Whereas I feel like with a couple of notable exceptions in this movie, it feels like everybody's just saying lines. Yeah, right. Like it's just, okay, well, we've got to set this thing up and you have to say a cool thing. So... Here's your cool thing. Yeah. Okay, try it again. Cool thing. Okay, you've said the cool thing. Move on. Excellent. Move on, yeah. Yeah. Run, run off frame. <laughs> right. It's a lot of that. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think I think you're right, though. I think also, if you really love this, which a lot of people do, great. Like, honestly, really good. And I'm not trying to take that away from anybody if I didn't love it as much. Same if you really hate it. I don't want to take that away from you either. Right. Hold that in your yeah. heart, genuinely. But the thing is, I think... Hold that hate in your heart. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's a real Jedi-Sith situation, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Don't let the other side sway you, because that's a trick. They try and trick you every time. I think also, as far as general audiences go, if you're not really a Star Wars fan, because that's where the money is as well, is with the general, general audiences. Audience, yeah. Not for diehard fans, it's, uh-huh. for, it's for general audiences. Well, diehard fans aren't going to see it. Of course they're, they're not. They're going to see Die Hard, because it's a Christmas movie, and it's Christmas time. <laughs> that's what they're doing right now. They're just lining up yeah. around the block to watch Die Hard in some sort of Christmas-themed yeah. theatre. They've got ho-ho-ho T-shirts on, <laughs> wearing little hats, they're holding machine guns. Exactly. Because the thing is, to a general audience, I'm mm-hmm. not talking fans, Yes, this presents like Star Wars. Like you said, there's lightsabers, there's space combat, there's revelations about who's who, there's twists and turns. Flips. Flips, obviously. That's mm-hmm. what I meant when I said tri- twists and turns. <laughs> turns yes. yeah. So I think this would just be the same as any other if you're yeah. a casual fan. Because yeah. it just does all of those things with villains that you've seen before. You know yeah. what I mean? Or maybe villains you haven't seen before. <laughs> yes, maybe. We'll yeah. get to that in spoilers. Get to that in spoilers. The thing is as well, I, it, there is a breakneck pace to this from the very get-go. And I didn't enjoy that aspect of it, not because I was like, what's happening? I can't follow this. It just felt kind of unrelenting for quite a lot of it. I mean, that's what a man who isn't following it would say. <laughs> yeah, sure. No. I mean, I understand when they got to get a thing to get another thing to get the next thing to get the thing after that. Mm. 
all of that makes sense to me. Yes. But it was really just running from place to place, planet to planet. Yeah, it was a series of fetch quests. Yes. As, as a la a video game. Mm. But if you're not playing the video game, if you're watching somebody play a video game, yeah. I don't find that exciting at all. Yes. Uh, I think I said this in the video as well. I stand by it. Yes. This movie doesn't feel like a sequel to The Last Jedi because so much of the stuff established in The Last Jedi, yeah. especially towards the finale, they just ignore... They just well, they of, they build on some of it in odd ways. Yeah, right. Like to try to make it a different series of films. Yeah, yeah. And but it also doesn't feel like if if you went okay, well, I didn't like Last Jedi, so I'll just ignore it. It doesn't feel like a sequel to The Force Awakens either, because there's so much missing in the middle. Yes. So it, this this to me feels like the sequel to the proposed Last Jedi remake, the fan made Last. Last Jedi remake, there, which there at this point has has uh, has acquired four hundred and seventeen million dollars in pledges. That's nearly enough. I know, right? <laughs> For marketing I, alone, I agree. Yeah. So you know, as soon as they get permission from Disney, <laughs> notoriously protective corporation Disney, to get that remake gone. Yeah. But it feels like they've just gone. Okay, imagine in the middle, in between Force Awakens and this, there was a movie. It's the movie we all wanted. Yes. And there's flips. And there's lightsaber battles, and everybody's cool and has abs. Yes. And then throughout this, there's hints that you know certain characters are returning, and this you know there's there's hints towards what's going to happen in the third one, and this is a sequel to that. Yes. But it it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I, I, there's definitely some game breaking elements in, yeah. in here for for me as well. It's interesting you say that because spoiler alert, the emperor is back in this. I mean, if you've seen the marketing, the emperor is back in some form, right? Uh-huh, you've sure. seen the poster and whatever. Yeah. I assume. Mm-hmm. We've known for like a year. If I could make one change, and this would not fix everything, but I think it would make this movie more compelling and make more sense. Mm. What do you think you know better than Chris Terrio, the writer of <laughs> Batman v Superman and Justice League? We'll get to that. Okay, fine. All but right. that's what I'm saying. Also, that's what I'm saying. If you hold that thought, mm. that's what I'm saying. This is how Justice League felt. Because in Batman v Superman, yeah. there's a lot of weird stuff where... Superman's like this mopey dick and Batman's out there like machine gunning people and like yeah. crushing people's heads with a Batmobile or whatever. <laughs> and when that movie finished, I'm like, that's wildly out of character. How are they going to fix that in the next one? Like what what plot elements are yes. they going to change? What, what big reveals are they going to be like, you know, to say, okay, well, actually, Superman, Batman didn't kill anybody. He killed some robots or whatever. Mm. But in Justice League, they went... Just move forward. Yeah. Don't think about what happened in the past. Yes. We'll make a movie as if none of that happened. Yeah. We'll keep and that's the same technique they've seen employed sure. in this. I think it's better employed in this than uh-huh. it was in Justice League. But yeah, yeah right. that's a pretty apt comparison. I don't know if you play Fortnite, Mason, knowing that you do extensively and always. Oh, yeah, He's sure. playing it on his mobile telephone right now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he's, look, he's, he's old school, so it's one of those, you got to crank the handle kind of phone. Oh, yeah, so right. Uh-huh. You ring in and be like, turn left. That's right. Use... Use the building build tool. The, build the fort, <laughs> as is in the name. If it's night. Yes. <laughs> Obviously. But at the very start of this movie, spoiler alert for the very first thing that happens. The opening crawl. Movie, the opening crawl. It says that the there's a broadcast from the unknown regions from what appears to be the Emperor. Uh-huh. And they released that broadcast in Fortnite, in a Fortnite live event. That's the huh. age we live in, okay? So if you want to hear it, I've got a video about voice cameos that you can hear it in. If you oh, want to check out. So is this, below, is this voice, is this... Do we see this in the movie? No. Okay. And the reason, and what I'm saying is, if they had have added that to the very last scene of The Last Jedi, yeah. then I think it would have gone a lot further to make this a more comprehensible reason for the Emperor being back and not like a weird retcon that he was maybe always there the whole time. Yeah. If you at least went back one movie and went, hey, hint, hint, yeah. you might still or be Or even around. just, I mean, put it on YouTube. like so- Do a short film. Well, not even a short film. Just do it. Do a do, long film. Do a long <laughs> film, but do it like one of those. Just put up like go to the Disney's channel or the Star Wars channel or whatever, and just you know put it up as like yeah test footage, not for release or yeah. something like that. And people will be like, "What's this?" And you click on it, and it's yes. you know the Emperor's. I think that works as well. I think yeah. it would have been. I mean, I think if they had thought of it, yes, like because they weren't going to bring the Emperor back. That was a Colin Colin Trevorrow wasn't going to do it when he was making the movie. Yeah, right. They probably would have put it in the movie, but yeah, they could have. Put it in a comic or a book or, like you said, a viral marketing thing. But it's just kind of dumped in your lap at the start yeah. of this movie. And so, prepared- and it's never really rectified at how we got here. Yeah, but and I, I know it will be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but- I don't think we ultimately. I don't think we need an explanation as to why he is back if there were some clues in prior movies because yes. he's a villain. It doesn't. I don't. I don't need to know the exact specifics of like. Well, force magic and clones and blah 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 and all that. Yeah. I don't. I don't need to know the rules specifically. Yeah. But if there was some element, if there were clues throughout the previous two movies, and then he returns in this one, 
I'd be like, okay. Yeah. But, and again, we, we are going to get retcons in the future in comic book form or we're going to get it. People that, you know, J.J. Abrams is going to be asked about stuff. Forever. In, forever. But they're going to be like, okay, in Force Awakens, when mm. we see this clip or this character looking to the left, what are they looking at? And yeah. you'll be like, the Emperor. The Emperor was there, the emperor was there obviously. Yeah. Of course yeah, he, he was He's given there. the thumbs up off yeah, screen. That's right. Yeah, go go evil. <laughs> evil forever. Yeah. You mentioned Chris Terrio, though, and this feels more Batman v Superman than The Force Awakens is because The Force Awakens was co-written by Lawrence Kasdan who worked on both Return of the Jedi but more famously Empire Strikes Back. Mm. And he reigned in a lot of the craziness and ideas of George Lucas and kind of streamlined them, right? I see. And I feel like a lot of the reason why The Force Awakens works well for me, I know it's not for everybody, as a, re- as a soft reboot and a continuation, I think it does, mm. is because it feels more like it brings in those key elements of Star Wars more naturally Whereas this feels like kind of herky jerky, bit herky jerky in terms, of, in terms right. of storytelling. You know what I mean? I think yeah. bringing back Lawrence Kasdan would have gone a long way to making this more in line with the previous movies. Because I think even if you hate the Last Jedi, which we don't, mm-hmm. leave your comments. But <laughs> <laughs> I think there is still a natural progression there. Yes. Where, again, whether or not you might disagree, but I think whether or not you like it or not, I feel like it's still like, okay, what came before and how can we extend on that? Mm-hmm. Even if you don't agree, but this feels like what came before, how can we fix that? Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah. I feel like again, a, a lot of this a lot of this movie feels to me not like, okay, what can we do in this scene to make it the most thrilling? Mm. It's what can we do in this scene that will upset the least number of yeah. people. I think they were like, okay, in every scene we've got a choice between A and B. Yes. A will upset fewer people. Yes. And it'll it'll it's it's the most status quo kind of thing. Yeah. So let's do that. And they just did it for two hours. Absolutely, yeah. I think a really good example of that is where there's going to be a big battle at the end and Dominic Monaghan's character says, why don't we just do the Holdo manoeuvre? Uh-huh. You know, like in The Last Jedi, he says, that was rad. Uh-huh. Like, and it looked good visually, he yeah, said. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. It made a real impact on the universe. Remember that time was real quiet? quiet yeah. And then it was quiet. And it was quiet. And someone's like, that was one in a million, that would never work or whatever again. Mm-hmm. It's not one in a million. It's turning a ship and pointing at another ship. Right. I, I think if you've never flown a spaceship, you could do that. Right. Right. Uh-huh. I mean, it's a, there's probably a button for there's it. There's probably a button turn for it. In, it. Turn it in one direction and then shoot yeah, it off. Yeah, you'd probably have to turn some safeties off or whatever, yeah, right. I'd uh-huh. imagine. But like, you don't need to go out of your way to be like, don't even worry about that because we're not going to do that again. That's something that happened and mm. you don't need to explain a way why you're not doing it again. Right. You're just not doing it. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, you're not doing it because mm. they don't do the exact same thing in every movie every time, except for the time they blow up the Death Star three times. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm. Uh, so Princess Leia's returned. Yep. I feel it looks flawless. Yeah. Uh-huh. If you watch the original scenes and there's some of them available deleted scenes, like they've completely changed her outfit and the setting and it just looks like she's there. So this is, so this is unused footage from previous movies. Mm. And they Force Awakens specifically. Okay, they had right. Like eight and minutes of footage, and they've or and they've recontextualized the stuff she's said. Yes, and they've put different actors yes up against her, and they've changed changed her clothes and and outfits and stuff. That being said, yes. it looks like when you go online and you get like a Darth Vader voice sampler. Yeah, and it's like the Force is strong with you or whatever. And she's like, someone goes to her, Princess Leia. What should we do? And she's like, Well, if we just believe in ourselves. You know what I mean? Yeah, it just feels right, like right. it feel look, it feels it's like whatever they had. It's the jerky boys. <laughs> it's you call up the a pizza place. You got your arm And they're like, what would you like? And and you're like, I would like you to believe in yourself. And they're like, okay, but what kind of pizza would you like? <laughs> the force is strong with you. Yeah, I know, but just <laughs> what pizza do you want? And they're like, ha, 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 yeah. jerky boys. Am I, am I, are they still doing it? I don't know. They they are, they're rotary phones. Yeah. But do, am I wrong in thinking that? No. I think it's you're in a tough position. Yeah. What do sure. you do? Yeah. Because they were really because an element of this movie is that she plays like a role in Ray's training, mm-hmm. and I think that that was probably the original idea yep. to get her in and have her as like the new mentor. Uh-huh. And they do a little bit of it, but there's only so much you can do with fourteen lines of dialogue. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. 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 I mean, the jerky boys would say otherwise, but <laughs> sure. Well, they're they're, they're got, not still around. They're an art unto themselves. That's basically. true. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> They're like the Banksy of crank phone calls. <laughs> so there is an. Um, uh, this is probably a more spoiler thing, so we might have to jump over to that. But there is in, some inclusions of some new force powers one, or an extension of. Yes. You feel that works okay? I think that works for the most part. Yeah. yeah. I think though we should just jump into spoilers. Okay, but first of all, before mm. we do that, I uh, we got, we got some more positives. I think we talked about it in the, in the video, but it's nice to have 
uh, Poe and Finn and Ray back together. Yes. I think that's good. They're a good team up. They're yes. a good throuple. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, it's it's fun to have them all together. They all look like they might kiss each other at any point. That yeah. chemistry is sizzling oh hot. Oh my god, it's sizzling hot. <laughs> <laughs> They're swapping jackets. <laughs> They're probably swapping pants. They're probably swapping pants. Um so that's good. Adam Driver's good in this movie. He is, yeah. It's good good solid work. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he gets treated the best in this. And I think Ray gets treated the worst. No, Kelly Marie Tran gets treated the oh, worst. Oh, she absolutely. Sorry, I'd forgotten. <laughs> I'd forgotten she was in this movie. So, look, I don't think this is a spoiler. If you don't, if you didn't want Kelly Marie Tran in this movie, you're in luck. If you wanted her off Twitter on, and off this movie, you, yeah. you pretty much got your wish. Because in this movie, they're like... It, and it even, it even feels like it's not just that she's just in the background for some yeah. of it. Or she's, you know, seen doing another mission somewhere. They they there's they make a point of having a scene where I think Finn says, You're gonna come on this mission? Yeah. And she's like, Nope, gotta look at some plans. Gotta look at some Star Destroyer schematics. I have to stay here and, the interesting, and not be in this movie. And the, the interesting thing is there's an element at the end of where you could have reintroduced her because she is a starship expert. Mm-hmm. Like in the last one, she works out where the signal is coming from uh-huh. on, with with Finn's help, of course. And they don't give that role to her. Yeah, right. They give it to a different character. Mm-hmm. And that, to me, feels kind of... Look, even if you love or hate that character, I think that's still a missed opportunity to be like, well, this person in this universe is established to know this particular yeah, thing. Yeah, right. So maybe you want to at least have her like mention yes. the, the idea well, of Or maybe it. she could be like... <laughs> I'm busy. Yeah. Why don't you get the second best person? <laughs> this rando. Yeah, that's right. And uh, similarly, there, you know, people have, for since The Force Awakens co- has come out, they've been like, uh, Finn and Poe should get together. Mm. And they're like, well, we, we're not going to do that. But yeah. there is definitely going to be some LGBTQIA, et cetera, representation in this movie. At the end, yeah. just two ladies kiss. An absolute coward's move. <laughs> right? <laughs> Because I think I saw people talking about it as well that is this to appease the Chinese market because you can just cut it out really quickly. Mm-hmm. But they don't do well in China, yeah, so as we've just yeah. talked about. So uh-huh. I'd, I mean, but at the same time... Because of the threat that Finn and yeah. Poe will kiss. <laughs> That's right. At any moment, the, the tension's too sizzling. But I feel like, for one, it's I know it's baby steps. Yeah. You know what I mean? In a, in a big film like this, mm-hmm. you got to ease people into it. Right. You know what I mean? It's Babies. Babies. That's why yeah. you need the baby steps for yeah. babies. But then again, I feel like also audiences are okay with this kind of stuff right. for the most part. Uh-huh. And if not, it's the world we live in. Like sure. It's, yeah, but I think the natural progression it maybe would have been interesting to hint something about Poe and Finn. But then again, also, are you just doing fan service then? Oh, right. And the okay. other thing is, and I saw an interesting criticism of having those two get together is it kind of undermines the point that two men can be friends and affectionate and kind to each other. That and, is true. And big each other up without being like, well, they're gay, aren't they? Right. You know what I mean? So uh-huh. I think there's also, that's a very valid point, mm. you know, to be like, well, you can only be like that if you love somebody and you want to kiss them. You know that's what I mean? true, right? So, yeah. you know, it's there's a number of ways you could look at it, but it's still a coward's move. It's <laughs> to put that right. kiss in, yeah. Uh, also, I think, I think Ray's character arc is kind of, I think she's, she's treated kind of shabbily. We'll get to it in... in well, let's do spoilers. Let's do spoilers. I, I, I think, yeah. I look, I think that you know her entire character arc was you know in Force Awakens, it's who are my parents, and in the second one, it was who well, are my parents? Who are my parents? <laughs> but it turns out they're nobody's. Yeah. But your parent, who your parents are, isn't important. Yeah. It's who you are and who you are now, and what you're going to do with yeah. your life. Now, spoilers. Spoilers. Here's the spoiler point where we're going to talk about spoilers. Oh, best movie ever or worst movie ever. I might just I might just talk through this and then I'll. I'm gonna say I still don't I'm know. gonna say worst movie ever. Yeah. And look, it's not it's not it's not a terrible movie, but I feel like again, it just felt very trite to me, and just mm. people saying their lines till they got to the end. Yeah. And just the space battles, the lightsaber fights, they were there, but the, to me, they I weren't thought, interesting. Yeah, I agree. I think, I mean, love or hate the last Jedi. Mm-hmm. I think there's there's like a simplicity to the space battles and this is and and even land battles or whatever and this is just chaos like a million ships and a million horses they even <laughs> they've been like we've built 10,000 starships and uh-huh. but the last jedi was like you had a row of like ATSTs and some speeders and yeah, right. even the space stuff wasn't like it had Poe against one star destroying you but yeah. this is just like imagine there were a million tie fighters you yeah, know I th- I think imagine a million yeah, ships right. show up that's much point. more dangerous than what was before it's bigger and more the yeah. stakes are higher than ever. You're right, and I think it feels 
more in line with, say, Empire to have just a line of yeah. ATATs. One of the things I didn't like about The Force Awakens was that final space battle. Yeah. Just like, we're going up against Star Killer Base and it's the biggest thing ever, but when there's a <laughs> million the Death Star ships. was bigger than the Death Star. <laughs> yeah. It's a million Death Stars. Yeah. So, spoilers. That's one of the things I didn't like about this, where they're like, you know how we got rid of the Death Star? Well, guess what? There's a thousand Death Stars. And just so you know it's a Death Star, we're just going to blow up this planet just quick, yeah? Yeah, just, See that planet? just quick, yeah? yeah. As that was happening, I'm like, am I supposed to know what this is? Like, what mm. planet is this? Is there anyone on there that I know? It was a planet that was mentioned earlier, but I think it was mentioned... I think it was a planet they were on mm. earlier in the movie for okay. a minute. But again, they bounce between so many planets. Yeah. And again, planets like Fauna in the in the... Star Wars universe, completely disposable. Kill anything. There's always plenty of them left, so don't even worry about it's it. It's amazing they didn't kill that snake monster. Yeah, they right. They kill literally every oh, I other about monster. The snake monster, yeah. <laughs> what do you think about force heal in this or force transfer your energy into another well, I person think didn't, thing? Yeah, I um It's already Mandalorian, it showed up this week as well. Well, I think that's why it showed up in the Mandalorian yeah. to, to I'm go. surprised it kind of tied in uh, like at all, let alone I mean it's only a little thing, but yeah. Yeah, yeah mm. I've written here. Uh, final order destroys a planet we've encountered an hour ago. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so there you that's, go. That's pretty good. Also, it's the final order. What happened to the second order? Third order? Um, a thousand ships, Mason! That's right. No, it was because it was a thousand ships. Mm. I think Richard E. Grant says something like, this will increase our force 10,000 fold. Mm. And I'm like, don't you have like a million as is? What's the, what, are, what are the numbers here? Mm. <laughs> give, me a, give me a rough estimate, Richard E. Grant. Yeah, come on, Richard E. Grant. Yeah. So they brought him in because so, Hux wasn't threatening anymore, I assume. I guess so. He's become sort yeah. of this fast And that's a, that's a last Jedi kind of... That's something that they did. And, yeah, right. You know, what uh-huh. do you do? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, speaking of being disposable. So a lot of people have mentioned this, uh, that Anakin's sacrifice at the end of uh, Return of the Jedi where he throws Emperor Palpatine down at Big Tube. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then goes, am I forgiven? And everyone goes, I mean, technically, yes. Yeah. All right? So he brings balance to the Force. Yeah. I guess... Because they weren't alive when he killed all those kids, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably were. They, they didn't see the hollow feed. Mm. So do you think that that then negates the idea that he brings balance to the Force? I don't he even know. Me- because he mentions in this... Yes. Because there's voice cameos. Uh-huh. I've got a video on it. Okay. That bring balance to the force as I did. But if the Emperor was still alive, you didn't. didn't. balance nothing, yeah. right? Speaking of balance, mm. there's a scene in this. They're like, we've, we've, you can't possibly destroy these Star Destroyers with your ships. We, we, we've got shields and lasers and stuff. and you, We've got a million lasers. You can't possibly <laughs> destroy this Star Destroyer. So they're like, let's do this old school. And they bring on like space beasts, yeah. some sort of like pack animals, and they all like horses, and they go up on the Star Destroyer and they destroy it that way. Just tip the Star Destroyer to one side, I reckon. <laughs> everybody who, everybody out there, again, we, I'm going to say this a lot. Whether you like The Last Jedi or not, there are people out there who are like, yeah, well, remember the start of The Last Jedi when the bombs fall? And there's no <laughs> gravity in space, so how can the bombs hit the thing? It's it's ridiculous. There's no, they don't know nothing about it. Just tip the Star Destroyer to one side. They'll fall off. This will all fall off. I didn't think of that. This will fall off, They'd I fall reckon. Off. Yeah. They're not horses with octopus tentacles that stick to things, are right. they? What they did, they took actual horses and put masks on them. That's right. So they're just regular horses. Yeah. Hooved and feeten. That's right. Hooved and feeten. Hooved and feeten. Yeah. Mm. So I saw this from Jenny Nicholson on Twitter, who you might know. She does a, she's got a YouTube channel. Does a lot of great stuff. Some of it's Star Wars related. So the idea is that the emperor who survived, I made a video on how he may have done that because they don't explain it. I think what happened is mm. he fell down the, the exhaust port or whatever it was. Yeah. And he landed on that arm. Yeah. You know, that we see in this movie. He just yeah. got stuck on it. Yes. And then he just got some of his men to move the arm to that planet. He must have surfed the explosion out of there like a rad cool dude. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Like Pierce Brosnan and yeah, he died the other yeah, day. Yeah. 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 So some people are saying Hag Ted, do it. <laughs> so some Do it. <laughs> Hag Ted. <laughs> some people are saying that that's the original Emperor's body and that's why it's propped up because it was recovered. But he didn't seem to have the scarring of the original Emperor. So right. I think it's supposed to be a clone. There's another theory that that's the original, original Emperor and he's always been projecting himself into that body. So when you killed the Emperor, you didn't kill the real Emperor, you killed... Oh, he was somewhere else. Somewhere else. Oh. So the idea is also that he created Snoke. You see a tank of Snokes. Yeah, just some spare Snokes. It's a Snoke-heavy tank. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just like, at a, just like a lobster tank at a restaurant. <laughs> They're all just in there like, oh, I hope I don't get sacrificed. <laughs> I hope I don't get pulled out of the tank and forced to be... Head of the first order for a bit, and then I get 
cut to pieces with a lightsaber. If I'm going to be sacrificed, I want to choose a golden robe. If I'm yeah. going to go out, <laughs> that's right, <laughs> the grand style. That that means he's capable of just cloning incredibly powerful force users, or at least channeling his body, his energies through it. So do you think? So in this is, was I think it's a physical puppet, and he's controlling it. Uh, I don't know. Because right. they don't explain they it. They don't explain it, it's true. But I think if he can talk through Darth Vader's mask using his voice, right? maybe it's got his consciousness in it and he's yeah. just got a few of them. Mm. But how's he, how's he tricked by the lightsaber thing then? Anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll get to that. Okay, Jenny Nicholson says... Says that why, if you did create Snoke, there's an obvious answer to this is because that wasn't always the origin for Snoke. Yes. Why wouldn't you create somebody more handsome and, and less like a ghoul? Right? You know? Yeah. You'd you'd bring in a handsome, good-looking human being who didn't look like a literal monster. Yeah. Just a towering goomba of a... You know, like, what is it? Right. Like, it doesn't look like anything else in the galaxy. Bring in a character who, when they walk into a room, you don't go, what's with his face? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. You know? I think that's a good point. Yeah, right? That I didn't make. But or yeah. they, they walk into the room and you go, what's with his slippers? <laughs> <laughs> Why are they turned up at the ends? <laughs> 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 anyway. You know what's interesting about this movie is? Yes. There are about three death fake outs. Uh, I, I've had I've got written here. I, I wrote it in. Pro, I've, what both of us did this week is we just open up a notes thing on our phones, and just every time we thought of something that made no sense, yeah, we just put it in. That's exactly. So pre spoilers, I've written suggests consequences, but never follows up on it. Yes. And then below here, I've get I've gotten che, well. Chewbacca appears to be destroyed in the in the for transport explosion. Yeah, for a minute. And they don't know for ten minutes. Yes. But we find out like a minute later. Yeah, right. Yeah. I don't want Chewbacca to die. No. But if you're going to do it, commit to commit it. Commit to him. To, yeah. yeah. And I mean, he dies. They in... committed to Akbar dying, and I wasn't happy about <laughs> That's it. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, this is what it is. Yeah. And and you know, uh, Chewie dies eventually in the the Legends yeah, canon. Hit by a moon. Hit by a moon. Exactly. So I mean, I would have been like, oh, okay. So it's a parallel to the yeah the old books, you know. But uh, yeah, and also I again, I'd have to watch it again to find out. But it looks to me uh, th- there was no clues. I don't think that there was a second. That there ship? was a second ship. No. They just put him on the ship, and then it's blown up, and then it's like, oh, but there was a second ship. It fi- it feels like they filmed it, and they were like, how do we get out of this? Yeah. We'll just say there was a second, ship. second ship. Is there a time to film another thing? No. No. Their their process is just keep writing scenes and never go backwards. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Just be like, and then they've just written, just say there was another ship and move forward. They did it on a typewriter. Yeah, you no have to, way to go You back. have to white it out. You have to do white out. Yeah. Or you have to scroll it back up and put X's through yes. everything. Yuck. That brings me to the Knights of Ren, though. I do want to talk about more fake outs, but yes. the Knights of Ren have kind of been built up in movies and in these movies and, and neglected on the whole. Yes. And I think, why would you introduce something and then I think maybe they should have been the Imperial Guards from the Royal Guards from the last one. Uh-huh. I'm sure J.J. Abrams had a plan to do something with them at some point. And but boy, has he. Boy, has he. So Some what, dudes. So what it turns out... Or it, girls. Or girls. Mm-hmm. So what it turns out that they are is... They handcuff Chewbacca off screen. That's and then pretty badass. There's a moment where they circle Kylo Ren and beat him up. Yep. And then he gets a weapon and he kills them all. Yes. That that's the arc. Quite easily. The Knights of Ren. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I mean, you know, a bunch. Of, you know, even though they were they were there and gone, a bunch of they classic, just had axes. I was going to say a bunch of classic <laughs> characters. Remember Axe Guy. <laughs> Remember mesh mask? All I remember was axe guy. I can't remember the other weapons, but I remember one guy having an axe and being like, "All yeah. right, cool." There, there is a comic on it at the yeah, moment, okay. which uh-huh. kind of explains their origin, and it's quite good. And it's been one issue, and I, I recommend it. But you know, maybe you want to flesh that out a bit more in the movies. That being said, <laughs> maybe I am, you do. But it is a good. Maybe you want to flesh out some movie characters in a movie. Yeah, it's good. It's from good comic creators, so I'm happy to also read that, but most people won't. Aren't going to, yeah. yeah. But at least it gives them the opportunity to tell this interesting story because a lot of the times with Star Wars stories and comics and books, you, there's a lot of things that you cannot say. And I think now that this trilogy C- is done... The C word. The C word for what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's all their names that's in the Knights of Ren series. <laughs> They're all just C word one to six or however many of them there C are. C word axe guy. Yeah. C word spear guy. Yeah. <laughs> In the first two, they were like these terrifying presences, and we, we, you know, they're always one step ahead of the good yeah. guys, and they show up at a town, and they've the Knights of Ren. You just see the Knights of Ren just massacring a town yeah. and then taking off. Then at the end, when it's like we massacred all of them, we're going to massacre you, Kylo Ren. Yes, and then and they beat him up, and then he turns the tables on him. Yeah. That would be people would be thrilled by that. Yeah. But it's just some rando dudes we've seen for a. 30 seconds at a time in the last two movies. Well, not even the second one. Yeah, right. Yeah. In the first movie. Yeah. 
and then they're back. Who cares? Who cares? It, they're just like a wave of random stormtroopers. Yeah. It's like they're stormtroopers, but they've got black armor they're on. They're grosser because yeah. they've got like weird gross suits or they whatever. They do have gross suits, yeah. Yeah, and I also cannot tell them apart. Yeah. Like at all. I think even with like, if you look at the Imperial Guards, if you look at like Phasma, uh -huh. I know who they are when I look at them. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, yeah. I only know who the Knights of Ren are if there's seven of them standing in a row. And I'm like, well, that must be if yeah. there is seven of them. Yeah. I don't know. Grumpy, sleepy, axy, sea <laughs> bomb. <laughs> That's grumpy. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the other death makeouts are Kylo Ren is about to die, and yep. then he doesn't. I mean, he does anyway. Mm -hmm. And C3PO gets his memory wiped, and it's a great sacrifice, and then he gets his memory back. Back, and it's fine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm. Would have been, you know what? Again, if if this is allegedly the finale, yes, you could even bring his memory back in the next one. Mm. You could be like, oh, the, the memory the memory reboot failed yeah. in this. Isn't that sad? But he made the ultimate sacrifice. That's what we want from C-3PO. Yeah. You know, this is why he's been around I the whole time. I thought he was good in this. Yeah, I did too. And I think that I think he wasn't really used in the last movies that well, yeah, but this right. one he was. Yeah. And in, 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 at the very least you'd go, oh, of course, that you know, he's been, he's, you know, he's this this weird little android this whole time. Mm. And But he's, that's the reason he's here because he's, yeah. he is a hero like the rest of them. But it, and, and I guess he was, but also... But let's reverse it straight away. I really like the idea also that his programming dictated that he couldn't translate Sith text. Mm. I think that's interesting and I think it's funny. Yeah. And I think also, like you said, you could wipe his memory and then maybe in the next trilogy, which they will do at some yeah. point, and they'll probably fix a bunch of shit from this or try yeah, to, yeah, I imagine, yeah. that you could be like, we need this critical piece of data from him because he was around during the prequels or whatever, uh -huh. and then you could bring it all back then. Yeah, right. You uh -huh. know what I mean? It's not a huge loss at the end if C-3PO, a character we won't see for 10, 20 years, doesn't remember some shit. Like, it yeah. doesn't matter, really. You could even do it like Search for Spock style where yeah. you maybe they attempt the memory you know, reboot or whatever, the, the backup, and it doesn't work. And they have and to put pointy ears on it. Exactly, him. that's right, as antennae. <laughs> But then, and, you know, you think it's gone and yeah. then, or even like, you know, they've done it with data as well. You think the memory's gone, but then you can see snippets. Yes. Like it, it seems to return in snippets and you go, well, he'll be back one day kind yeah. of thing. That would be nice. The data or data? Data? Yeah, Picard says data. <laughs> so that's what we're going with. Great, terrific. Data? I thought it was strange that they were like, oh, Pope Dameron has a checkered past. He was a smuggler. And people yep. were like, well, that's outrageous. Is it? Um, yeah. smuggler, doesn't where matter. are you getting the rest? Where, where are the rest of these rebel pilots yeah. coming from? Exactly. They're all terrible people. Where's Greg Grunny Grunberg from? He yeah. grew up in the resistance, apparently, from the comics or whatever. Uh. But he's dead. Yeah. I think he should oh, yeah, be exploded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There you go. There's yeah. a sacrifice. Great. But, <laughs> great. Yeah. I like that character, but I didn't care what he died. Was he in the previous two? Yes. No, previous one. Okay. Uh, the Force Awakens. Poe Dameron also, I mean, I, I, I'm so sure he, he just, So Abrams just brought back his mates, yeah, basically. That's okay. fine. I don't know. I guess, that. sure. But it's because he's like the Wedge Antilles, which we'll talk about. But um, <laughs> Poe Dameron in the comics, and this is, I think a lot of this stuff wasn't factored into this movie. He He's the son of two rebel soldiers who were at the Battle of Endor oh, and knew Luke okay. Skywalker. So I guess he went off and did some smuggling stuff or whatever. But to be like, he's got this checkered past, it's to me, it's like it's like a rich kid who deals some weed and then just gets a job in a law firm because his parents did. Like, yeah, right, I mean? uh -huh. That's about as interesting as that is to yeah, me. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I still like that character. He's sure. got great hair. Oh my God, does he ever. <laughs> does he ever, <laughs> yeah. I just saw this interesting tweet. Uh, it's from Chase Mitchell. It says, It's a shame Kelly Marie Tran died after making The Last Jedi, but I'm glad JJ tried to make the most of the footage they had left of her. Brutal. <laughs> Yeah. Here's a question. Yes, I'm ready. What's with that Sith dagger? I mean, I know it's a dagger. Yeah. And it's got a thing that you click out. Case closed. But you stand at any point near the Death Star. Yes. And you line it up with whatever's left of it. And yep. it will point exactly to the thing you need to be in. Yep. Don't you think it'd be better if it, like, unlocked a door? Maybe. Don't even. you think it would have been better if they held it up and it glowed when it went over the thing they were supposed to be? You know what would have been better? Mm. If it was just a piece of paper and it said, go to this point on the Death Star. <laughs> Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That works too. It would say on the top of it, it'd say, uh, Rebel Forces don't read this. Final Order Forces. P PTO. Yeah. <laughs> PTO. Uh, go to this bit and get the cool stuff. Yeah. Dark Ray, right? What'd you think? Uh, yep. They did it. Right. They sure did. They, uh, they sure did. did. Yeah. Also, I thought it was very straight. This is just a list of things I am just thought was odd. Yeah, yeah. 
So the ultimate sacrifice that Kerry Russell made, she had a magic coin, which meant she could go anywhere. Yep. And she gave it to Poe Dameron so we could land in the hangar of a Star Destroyer. Okay, I've written here. They're constantly landing in hangars of Star Destroyer. That's what I'm talking about. Here's the thing. So I've written here. I know there's less guards, but it's never a problem. Yeah. Well, I've written here. James, what I've written here. Okay. I've written Imperial Coin versus Mandalorian. And what I mean is there was an episode recently of The Mandalorian. I think we talked about it last week. Sure. It's the one where they have to get on the prison ship. Yeah. And it's Richard Ayoade's droid. Yes. He's just like, okay, we're going to do this and this and we're going to zip around and we're going to go above their their shield, well, above their sensors and we're going to drop down. And it's it's fun and it's exciting and they don't need... And they explain it in 10 seconds. Yeah, and they don't need an Imperial coin. And I feel like the second one is way more... That feels way more Star Wars. Yeah. And, and kind of, you know, fun and, and sort of space cowboy-ish than... You collect a coin and then you go to a place and you insert the coin in the thing. And, and they then, just let you... And they just let you in. doesn't it, matter what you're flying. Yep. <laughs> this ship covered in sand. Well, what happens is you plug the coin in. It's got a big in. snake bite in the yeah, side of it. exactly. <laughs> you plug it in and it says, uh, Final Order, don't read this. <laughs> just let him in. Yeah. <laughs> Rebel Forces PTO, got him. <laughs> got him, mate. Got him. Anyway, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is... Um, I'm going to talk about some Palpatine stuff. Okay, I'm ready. So it turns out that Princess Leia, General Leia, and maybe Luke, yes. I, it seems, knew that she was a Palpatine uh-huh. and decided to train her anyway, which I understand because you're not who your parents are, or in this case, your grandparents are, because your dad is Darren Palpatine. I yeah, guess. Your, your parents are no one. I mean, one of them was the son of the Emperor, <laughs> and we're not going to get into that at all, yeah. are we? I mean, did he give birth to his son? Is that. Yeah. Palpatine. Okay, it's probably from, from that. He's probably got a tube of them. Thing. He's got a tube of them. Yeah, right. See, uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So he had a son, Darren or Derek, Derek, <laughs> Derek. That's a Star Wars name. Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. Derek Palpatine. Uh huh. Yeah, it's set, it's not said in the movie, I believe, but I think it is the father that's the son, I believe, or maybe it is said. I don't know. It is the father. No, it is. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fair enough. But you don't want to tell Luke Skywalker, having lived through being withheld a piece of information about what his heritage was and then, and then getting being stung with getting it at the worst possible moment fucking blindsided right. after getting his hand cut off yep. even afterwards he was like what the hell man like you knew I was walking into that yeah you told me you couldn't help but you right. could have helped mm. by giving me that one critical piece of information and what ray's going to do is, is ray would be like why didn't you tell me that crucial piece of information and they'd be like because that wasn't going to happen <laughs> Two years ago, it was going to be a different thing. So we didn't know at the time because we're not real people. We're just characters. We're being written by different writers. We gain the information as you do, Ray. You're not even real either. What's going on? Anyway, I feel like the review... And then he just screams and then it pulls back and it's just a set on the Disney lot. <laughs> Some just extras just having coffee. And- yeah. <laughs> Uh, but we talked about before how the whole de- t- takes away from the destiny thing and, and like it adds that element of, which I think is not as interesting. I, what I think is interesting about the Ryan Johnson reveal is that that's the, he, may, he went out of his way to make sure it was the worst possible thing that she could hear. She wants to hear, I'm Han Solo's daughter. I'm Luke Skywalker's daughter. I'm somebody important's mm. daughter. We're all someone's daughter. We're all someone's, someone's son. son. Exactly. How long can, can we, we look, look at, at each, each other, other down the barrel Barrel-a. of a... Weird space binocular. <laughs> I was going to say one of those big guns off the Star Destroyer because they're all a Death Star now. <laughs> they're all a Death they're Star. All a Death Star. Yeah. So I think that's interesting because that's a crippling piece of information. But also she didn't really know who the Emperor was, surely. No. I mean, she'd barely heard of Luke Skywalker. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure she would have known who the previous Hitler was. I mean, yeah, everybody well, I guess that's heard true. It, yeah. What if they'd been like, Ray, your father is... That guy from the first movie who was like, one quarter portion. <laughs> She'd be like, oh, gross. Dad. Yeah. Why do you give me more portions? <laughs> okay. I, yeah, that's a good point. No special treatment. You yeah, know what I guess mean? that's probably no true. No favours. Yeah, yeah, yeah I you guess. Grew, mate, you, grow, you grow them up tough. Yeah, that's but true. This is a question I'm genuinely asking people and I want to know the answer to. Mm-hmm. Even if you hated The Last Jedi, which is yes. fine, and I don't have a problem with that at all. Uh-huh. Just tip the spaceship. Yeah, just tip the spaceship, <laughs> obviously. But The horses would fall off. Yes, is this a better reveal that she's somebody than being nobody? Yeah. Does this fix anything for you? Put aside whether you love or hate it. Yeah. Is this mm. better? Because mm. for me, whatever way you look at it, and obviously it's my opinion, I, do, I cannot see for me how it is. Yeah. And again, it just it just goes back to 
It's important who your family is. Yeah. This is the only reason you're not a spec in this universe. Yeah. Is because you're the granddaughter of this incredibly evil man. Mm. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be doing it. You'd still be a scavenger yes. on this planet or whatever, or, or just nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I just, I'm, I'm curious to know what people think about that. Yeah. Let's talk more about the Emperor. Okay. Because his master plan is yes. Uh, you strike him down yep. and then you get all his power by you. He's going to go into you and then. He's going to But also, all the Sith are in you. Which yeah. I believe is not really a thing for... This is again goes back to like canon and things that George Lucas said. There's only ever two and the reason the Sith are obsessed with cheating death is because there is definitively no afterlife for them. The uh-huh. Jedi can live on, but if you if you like this certain lifestyle, let's say... Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Like a Scientologist, there's just hell for you afterwards. I understand, There's nothing sure. there for you at yeah. the end, is my mm, point. Yeah. It's the same as Scientology. Do you like black leather and red lightsabers? Then yeah. Stay alive as long as possible. <laughs> That's right. So I don't feel like there would have been a million Sith to go in. Who are all those guys anyway? doesn't matter. <laughs> Someone had to build the spaceships, Yep, didn't they? Yeah. But so she absorbs all the Sith and gets the power. But also I feel like he's not the kind of guy to give up his power or his body or his mind to be one of a billion in another person. I, was, was, I, I, I assumed that his plan was that he would be the dom because he's been around the longest. Oh, he's I the guess. dom. Yeah, he's the dom, exactly. Mm. That he he is the the major force. He would be the major force in his body. So I I would my assumption was that he was banking on he would t- take control of Ray. Yeah, you probably on some right. Light, yeah. On some level. Okay, fair. But also his plan is, Ray, if you kill me, if you chop me up with your lightsaber, <laughs> I'll go into your body and and take over your body and and that's and sucked in. Yeah, you won't like it. But later, if <laughs> you whip out a second lightsaber and you come at me by believing in yourself. <laughs> and, you, and you zap me back with my energy. I've got all the Sith in me. Yeah. You've got all the Jedi in you. Then we scream at each other. We scream at each other. There's, <laughs> I'll absorb all your power, but there's too much power. Yes. Then that won't happen. Yes. So it's just a it's it's a method. Mm. If I chop you up, if yeah. you chop me up, yes. you're doomed. Yes. But if you do the you melt my face, then you're scar. fine. Yeah, it's fine. Pretty good melt melting. Effect. Killing's killing. In killing's this, killing. Yeah, that's right. I, I hear you. I completely agree. Right? But the wave of energy. Oh, it's a wave it's like of energy. It's like when Gohan defeated Cell, right? The first time they blasted him, Cell was able to regenerate from a single cell. Oh, hence the name. Hence the name Cell. Huh. But when he really blasted him, mm-hmm. he wasn't able to regenerate because even the cells wow. were, were disintegrated. Huh. He should have had smaller cells. I agree, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We should have <laughs> kept some cells somewhere else, like in a box or whatever. Yeah, or in a cell. Yeah, in a cell, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or in the fridge. That's right. Yeah. It's, a, it's the perfect place. Mm. But yeah, that whole thing of like, you'll never stop me. Well, what if I have two lightsabers? Oh, actually, <laughs> that's that's two, isn't yeah. it? That's quite a lot. Mm. Because she's still <laughs> trying to kill him. I get, I'm with right? you. I don't yeah. disagree. I can't, it's not I, a case of, well, I don't have an argument no, against that, it. No, but I'm saying, I'm, it, it, the, the logic in the movie seems to be, well, I'm the emperor trying to kill you with my with my lightning. Yes. But if, I, but if you bounce that back to me yeah. and kill me with it, it doesn't count. Yes. But it should count. Yeah. Because you could just dodge out of the way and not kill him. Do a dodge roll. Yeah. But if you're just coming at him, you're still killing yeah. him, you know? What did you feel about the uh, the Jedi cameos, though? I've got a video on it. I mentioned it. Uh, was there? Was there I felt it was a bit muddled. Yeah. I mean, you can recognise Luke. Yeah. Because he's in the movie. <laughs> yeah, he's in a lot of these. Uh, but some of the other ones, I'm like, is that supposed to be is Mace that Qui Gon? You, you probably. I can I can recognise yeah. Mace Windu. I've got a list, and I've okay. got actually what everybody says. I've okay. kind of muddled uh, muddled right. through it with Matt to kind yeah. of figure that out as uh-huh. a video. But but yeah, I felt like. That was a late in the day addition for people who are fans of the extended stuff because there were yeah. some animated characters in there. Oh yeah, Ahsoka. Ahsoka was in it. Yeah. Kane and Jarrus. There's a few others. Right. Uh, but Dexter Jetster. Dexter Jetster makes an appearance. Grievous, but just the robot parts. <laughs> right. Just the worm. Clink clank clank. <laughs> <laughs> so those worms that nearly killed Padme. Yeah. Just. <laughs> The sand. The sa- Anakin's <laughs> finally made peace with the sand. Oh, he's okay with it. He's yeah. okay with it now, Just yeah. sitting in it. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Uh, and a lot of people have mentioned this, and I tend to agree. It, it's kind of a missed opportunity to bring Hayden Christensen back. Yeah, right. I and thought they were going to. I thought they were going to. You know and, what's weird about And this? that's fan service, obviously. Well, here's the but thing. But so's this. Yeah. But it's not as good. What's weird about this movie is that the fan service, I don't mind fan service. Avengers Endgame is essentially all fan service, but at least it's done well. Yeah. And it was kind of. They should have called it Avengers fan service like Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Yes. That's what they should have called it. I know. People still would have seen it. Right. 
you know, at, at least they they built up to it properly. I feel like this movie it should have either been no fan service or all fan service, yeah, like or at least fan service done better. Mm. I mean, if we'd ac- we'd actually seen the Force Ghost that, yeah. that you know had re- I, that's kind of what I was expecting. Yeah. I'd be like, that would have been cool. I think also at the end when Ray sees the ghost of Luke and Princess Leia, mm-hmm. that's an opportunity to also put in Ben Solo and Anakin Skywalker. Right. It's kind of odd that Ben's not there for one. That seems more important. Uh-huh. But you've got your Skywalker lineage yeah. there. Right. Well, I mean, that's true, but also, look, I, I have two thoughts about that. One is that we well, got to get those white clothes. Well, exactly. <laughs> Takes you a few years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, for, firstly, uh, I guess she didn't know Anakin Skywalker. And I think there might be some rule that you can't see someone if they don't. Yeah. Well, she knew Ben Solo. But also, well. they. Yeah, I know. But here, that's the thing, though, because his last name's Solo, and the only, the reason those two are there is so she can look over when the old lady asks her what her name is. She can go. Yeah. Ray Skywalker, but I think it also would have been funner if she'd looked back and gone, Ray Moisture Farm. <laughs> I think that would have been funny. She just... Ray Double Suns, yeah, <laughs> Double Double Hot Suns, yes. <laughs> Ray, whatever weird creature you're riding. Ray, old woman on a beast. <laughs> That's my name. But I think I think it's genuinely because they're Skywalkers. If Solo, if Ben Solo was also there, she'd have to be like. Solo, I don't know. Ray Ben Solo. Ray Ben Solo, <laughs> exactly, yeah. That's exactly the thing that people hated about Solo. Where yes. they were like, what's, oh, I'll just write Solo. That's a, I, you're right, yeah. It's on, it's very, people are like, oh, that's a bit on the nose. That, oh, she mm, looked at Skywalker. That being said, said, I know, I prefer Ray Nobody. Yeah. I do. Yeah. That being said, I do. Oh, there's a scene in the thing, there's a scene in the, in, when they go to the weird Burning Man situation on that <laughs> on that planet and the C3O is like, the child would like to know what your last name is. <laughs> Tell her your last name. You know, children are always asking what your last name is. This specific species are very interested in that Lab, for some reason. Just, we've, we've landed on the planet that demands to know your lineage, where you're from, <laughs> because that's important. Not the name you give someone, but that you provide to them. They, yeah. they want to know your... This is the disgrace planet. <laughs> <laughs> the planet of familial disgrace. That's what this is. Oh, you don't have one. Well, go and jump in that fiery pit. <laughs> yeah, good point. But I also, look, I know it's naff, but I also kind of like the idea that despite whoever you are and your destiny and wherever you're from, you can choose to be what you want to be. Yeah. So that's how I, I mean, take it I mean, if you've got as. Palpatine's powers, obviously. <laughs> yeah. If you are from Palpatine's genetic lineage and therefore you've got incredible force yeah. powers, then you can choose whatever you want to do. Yeah. But I mean, Broom Kid, Broom Kid's still Broom Kid, isn't, <laughs> isn't he? It? Was Broom Kid in this? He wasn't. No, he wasn't. I, didn't I, think I think so. Broom Kid's more a metaphor. And I'm uh, glad they left it like that. Yeah, right. Broom Kid is like an idea of the yeah. future. Like anybody Egg Boy. Can be a, like Egg Boy. <laughs> yes. Exactly. exactly. Google Egg Boy. Mm. People yeah. know about Egg Boy, surely. Yeah, but not everybody. You okay, never know. Right. Yeah, right. but he's a national hero. I agree. Yeah. Also, it's Tatooine, but who cares? Right. Because uh-huh. I know, I think Kevin Smith talked about how there's this secret set that he had the opportunity to see oh. and he decided not to because it was like the final shot and it would have ruined the movie. Or maybe not the final shot, but it was a big reveal. I thought it might have been the, the, the Crash Death Star throne room. Okay, but what it actually was was going back to Tunisia. Well, they, Kevin I think, Smith, go in here, go into this, no, go into they, this plane. They built it because if, okay. ba- if yeah. they went back, if they went back to Tunisia, people would have known that they were there. Oh, that's probably true, yeah. yeah. So I, I think this is a very close Kevin set. Smith, don't go in there mm. because it's a it's series a, of green screens. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing there but we've written Tatooine moisture farm on some pieces of paper yeah that's right so yeah. watch out you'll get the idea mm. yeah I think that's what it was but that wasn't an interesting reveal because we saw it at the end of Revenge of the Sith we saw it in the original trilogy a couple of times we've seen sand planets Boy, forever yeah <laughs> forever we, ju- we, we just we saw it in, in the this Mandalorian movie. oh I was well. going to say in this movie yes in, exactly in this very movie here's a question for people this is actually a tweet I was going to say for later but I'm going to put it now okay uh, it's from Joe he says is the rise of Skywalker better or worse than Return of the Jedi better than Revenge of the Sith and are third movies in the trilogies ever good uh, well maybe? finales are difficult aren't yeah, they <laughs> sure but that, I thought that was an interesting question in terms of wrapping up this trilogy. Yeah. How does it compare between, as as in wrapping up Revenge of the Sith and Return of the Jedi? Because I think this does a worse job than both of those movies at wrapping up the trilogies on the whole. Yeah, there is there is. I mean, I don't. I'm not a huge fan of the prequels, but that closes up a lot of the the, the things that those movies do. Yeah, at the very least. Look, I don't like the the prequel trilogy at all, but at least mm. it has a singular vision for the most part yeah. throughout those three. 
and it and it had a you know at least Lucas knew where it was going. At least he knew time. how many flips he was going to do a movie. Heaps forty a yeah, movie. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just thought that was an interesting question. Mm. And again, you know, Return of the Jedi. You know, people don't like or do not like the Ewoks. Yeah, uh, they're in this though. Yeah, they are two Ewoks. Twewoks. Twewoks. Uh but you know, it's it's a. I think it's it's probably a pretty solid finale, and yeah. all things considered. It's got the whole Vader and the yeah. Emperor and Luke I think bit. the start yeah, and the end of Return yeah. of the Jedi are really good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, so you mentioned the Ewoks. Let's talk cameos. Okay. Lando is in it. Yep. He just looks like he's wants to have sex with that woman at the end, right? He's like, who are you from? Yeah, are you? Exactly Where are you right. at? Here's the thing, though. Yes. Je- I, it's been talked is about. It's probably that. his daughter. It's probably his daughter because I think in some of the books it's going to be revealed or maybe it's been hinted at that he had a child stolen. Oh. But I think... Maybe it's pretty chipper, all things considered. Well, it's been a long time, and he's I probably guess. got a lot of kids. But yeah, <laughs> some of them to robots. He's probably like, Phew, that's a relief. <laughs> yeah. Don't have to pay that alimony <laughs> check this month. So I think Lando being reunited with someone, like showing some grief there. and yeah. I think, by the way, I think Billy D. Williams is really good in this. Yeah. When he shows up, he he felt alive and yeah. like he was having fun. Uh-huh. And, you know, and I think maybe he you want to... He did some flips. He did some flips. He did 100 mm. flips. They didn't catch him on film, unfortunately. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. He's just happy to be there. Yeah. But don't like don't you, don't yeah. you think he was also he, him trying to hit, him hitting on his daughter is pretty much par for the course. Oh yeah, Star Wars. He probably style. knew. <laughs> no, I mean like just yeah, just just characters in Star Wars. You're not wrong. Also, aren't Ray and uh, Ben Solo then technically related? Well, Palpatine created Anakin through the Force. Yeah. Uh, so yes. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, spiritually at the very least. Yeah. Which is still weird. I think so. Uh, the other thing is Han Solo makes an appearance, um, yeah. and I didn't. Really care, huh? Uh, what about you? Here, okay, here's here's something that I disliked in this movie. I I'm okay with Han Solo being there. It's lines that are just in there just to be said. They don't mean anything. It doesn't feel like there's a moment in that where I think uh, Kylo Ren says to Han, "I wanted. I know what I, I have to do, to do but I don't know if I'm s- strong. I don't one, know if yeah. I'm strong enough." And Han says, "Well, you are." <laughs> You got and any examples, was. or you gonna you yeah? You gonna help me out with that? The or? other thing is he's he's a memory, like he's yes. not. So that's like you murdered someone, and then you imagine them forgiving you. Yeah, like that's how that is. Again, not to be like this is how I would have done it, and I would have made a better movie because I wouldn't. Uh-huh. But I think it would have. Well, been... I would have. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. I would. How dare you? No, I would have. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I'll stand by that. As someone who will never get the chance to make a Star Wars movie, yes. I will. I, I, I make a better. They have a str- an estranged relationship, and that was not a real scenario. It was an imagined scenario because Han Solo can't come, come back through the Force or whatever, oh. right? So what if it was we had a flashback and he had a memory of ha- of Han Solo teaching Ben how to pilot the Millennium Falcon when he's a boy, and he oh. gives him, like, a life lesson about, like, forgiveness and being who you are and, you know, I'll always yeah, love you right, no matter right. what and all yeah. that. Don't you think that would have maybe been... That worked, and you could even say, oh, you know... When Would you put that in your better movie that yeah, you made? Did yeah, you make? <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, I mean, you could say that that memory. You know, when he turned to the dark side, all the you know, so many memories disappeared. You sure, know, and he couldn't recall them, and that's yeah, right, okay. how he was. Yeah. And then you know, once he's gone through all this trauma, then one of them resurfaces, and you go, and he goes, "I can do it." That's actually yeah. pretty cool. I can. That's yeah. pretty cool. I also thought Adam Driver's turn to Ben Solo. It felt like a genuine character change and his performance even his stance mm. you know he's kind of hunched and he's he's really defensive with the lightsaber like he holds it up like yeah. it's you know like it's the quite threatening and <laughs> the, like the one i always find it quite threatening yeah. to be honest but i i think there was some really standout moments from the last year i wanted like when they the lightsaber cut Snoke in half. Luke walking out to the battlefield. I know he wasn't real, but I actually really love that. And I yeah, think yeah. It, it's good. But he was real in the sense that again he was. I mean, he made a difference. He made a difference, and he's yeah. and that you know the, the whole point and and he was that's the last of his life yes. force. You know, so yeah. even though he wasn't there doing flips and, yeah. and chopping at at legs off or whatever, yes. it was it's still I really like that. Yeah. But you may, you may not have. But the only oh, I just said that I did. Okay, yes. <laughs> I'm talking to people listening, watching. But I am listening and watching. <laughs> oh, sorry. Jeez, Louise. I thought Ray passing him the lightsaber. Yes. And him bringing it out was like a genuine moment in this movie that I loved. Yep. And his stance, how he's kind of holding it the way that a Jedi would, he feels like Ben Solo more than Kylo yeah, Ren. Yeah, right. He does that kind of little shrug. Yeah, right. And he just cuts through him. Yeah. I thought that was too And then he's like, did I do that? <laughs> yes. He did. Yeah. But it would, again, it would have been nice if he was defeating some villains we cared Agreed. about. Agreed. Yeah, that would have made it even better. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. 
But I also, I liked the extension of that previous force power. Me too. But I guess it doesn't kill them if they do it. I also think it would be funny if you were watching those lightsaber fights when they're projecting themselves. Because can you see the other person? No, you can't, I don't think. That's no. fun then. Yeah, it is fun, yeah. You're like, look at this lunatic. <laughs> the aging was pre- pretty good in this. The Luke looks better than the Leia, I felt. Yeah, no, you're right. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, That again lends to my theory that they were going to get Princess Leia to train her. They were yeah, going to do yeah, that right, for the whole movie uh-huh. if she was, yeah, yeah. she was alive. Now, a lot of people have mentioned this to me because we had a hot scoop and a shot of poop mm-hmm. that Matt Smith was going to play the young emperor in this. Yes. I looked into this, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe that was a shot of poop. I'm not willing to acknowledge that as of yet. I did some background research and some bit of digging. Mm-hmm. Variety did confirm the reputable source that Matt Smith was in this movie. Oh. I think that he was a young emperor clone at some point, either puppeting or he was going to be a body that he transferred into or whatever, and they took it out to get more Ian McDermott in this. Because oh. he was definitely in this. Right. And there's also a, like an alien character that they went, well, maybe this is Matt Smith, and it's just like whoever. Uh-huh. I don't think you hire Matt Smith to do a weird cam- nothing cameo. I think that that was a major part of this movie that they took out. I don't know that for a fact. I've got a okay. video on all the stuff that I've kind of... Okay. Gathered coming up. But well, yeah. at the very least, you're building up your own sort of backlog of fake evidence for that. So that's so good. I don't have to eat that'll, a shot of poop. That'll, that'll help you in your case against doing a shot of poop. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, do you? I don't know. Do you think there's anything? No, I think to that's. That? I think that's yeah. seems seems plausible. Yeah. I might be wrong. Here's a, here's one piece of fan service that I think people are largely in favour of, but I think sucks. Okay. Is at the end Chewie gets a medal. No, I, think, I don't like that at all. Yeah, I think yeah. in a better movie. That mm. would be a fun piece of fan service. Also, they did it in a comic recently. Oh, did they? So he's got yes. two medals now. Well, he gave that one away. So no, oh. he's got one. He's got one medal. Okay, yeah. but I he it, gave it away because he didn't want it. To me, this this is the, this piece of fan service is kind of nail in the coffin of like, God, we'll just look. We've we've done we've 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 fixed all the p- things that the fans have been yelling about for the last couple of years. What else have they been yelling about? Yeah. Let's just check the internet for room. That's, oh, people don't people don't like that Chewie never got a medal at the end of Star that's, Wars. People are also over that. Like that's a joke now. People right. are like, well, he should have got a medal. Yeah, yeah, he should have. Yeah, but it doesn't. He yeah. didn't. He didn't get a medal. <laughs> I mean, he, he did. Because he's a dog man. <laughs> that's why <laughs> he would have eaten it. Yeah. <laughs> Where were they going to put it? <laughs> I mean, around his neck. For a moment, I thought it was one of the pinning ones. But he would have eaten it. He would have eaten it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He would have had to fish it out of his stool. Exactly. He would have eaten it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? I was kind of like, man, that Ben Solo stuff I really liked. Yes. I didn't like the Ian McDermott Palpatine stuff because it didn't feel fleshed out as even he was in the prequels. Yeah. It just was just like, ha, ha, I'm shooting lightning into the sky. Congratulations. Terrific stuff. Yeah. But, but there was so much lightning. I know. Oh, my but God. That's more lightning than ever before. That's quite possible. Because he's so powerful. <laughs> it illuminated his million ships. I like the bit where he's like, because there's two of you and that's important, I could drain your life force. Is it? I'm sorry, what? Yeah, right. <laughs> is that like a prophecy? Is that a thing you just realised? Mm. Is that written down somewhere? By the yeah. way, if there's two of them, PTO, you can drag, you can drag <laughs> right. their life force. Yeah, just... You want to explain that more than none? No. Or don't explain it? Yeah. Just have him say, I can. Yeah. I drain life force now. I don't know. What, whatever. Just, I don't understand why you couldn't have just been... He heard about a woman who was powerful in the force... Or he sensed her and he was like... I'm going to get that. Get that. Get her to me or whatever. You yeah. don't have to be like, yeah, it's my daughter. It's my daughter. Granddaughter. Because his son was Derek. Yeah, what's what's <laughs> Derek's deal? Was he not strong in the force? Why not? No, I don't think... It's, Why not? I think some, you can have kids and they're not force is it like Is it like baldness? Is, does it skip a generation? It can. But that's also a myth, Yeah, Mason. Man, I'm really like... I, don't, I mean, because to be honest, mm-hmm. I look at this and I look at Solo and I think there's way more swings in this than Solo. Uh, like, solo like, to me uh, was like pfft. when you say swings you mean like uh, they they tried they to do something they went for a thing right? yeah and solo to me I, it felt so generic and safe yes. and this I feel it had peaks and troughs but it was trying and doing things yeah and I didn't hate it so mm. I guess it's best but I kind of I this oh you know uh, what it should it, worst let's say worst yeah I just didn't think it was great yeah and I just. For me, I wish it was slightly better. There you go. Yeah. This is the, I got an email. This is from, this is from Kieran Whitehead. Mm. Spoilers. Yep. For Rise of, Rise, it's we just, know Kieran. We're in the spoiler section, yeah, Kieran. No, yeah, right. The Rise of Skywalker theatre reactions. I uh, just seen the Rise of Skywalker on its opening night in Ireland. The whole theatre groaned when Ray and Kylo kissed and then openly laughed quite a lot when Kylo died. Yeah. Just wondering if... Just thought this was interesting to report and I wonder if this is common. 
Yes. Based on my screening of it. Really? There were any number of moments that were meant to be like poignant or, or, or you know, big. Like s- when Chewie went, ah! Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, like that? and and people people laughed mm. like any anything that was meant like when they said Palpatine you know Ray you're pal- you're a Palpatine people Great laughed stuff. Yeah. and this wasn't people who were just at the movies to see a movie mm. this was at a midnight screening <laughs> opening night so it's presumably people who are at least somewhat invested yes and it wasn't just one group of scallywags like right up the back being like huh, we're drunk yeah. and we're here it was ass- assorted people throughout S- the smatterings cinema. smatterings there were yeah, smatterings of laughs yeah, I don't, laughters yeah yeah i think you could have probably done without the kiss i guess yeah anyway mm. turns out that kylo ren can do the same thing uh that Tom Cruise can in reverse in The Mummy. <laughs> he kisses a woman to death. Yep. Kylo Ren to life. It's incredible. Parallels, aren't they? They really are. And they're both about Scientology, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Secretly. Remember that time Ray defeated a big snake with love? Do you remember that? Yeah. It's pretty good, right? No. No, it was bad. Yeah. Because in Star Wars tradition, kill anything you say. Yeah, exactly. She drop, would have chopped it in half. Drop a quick. door on a rancor. Yes. You see a weird, like, hairy, hairy space rhino? Kill it. Steal its baby. Give it yeah. to a gremlin. <laughs> Just let him chomp down its egg. <laughs> num, num, num. It's hairy egg. Oh, 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 oh. Just drink that goopy yolk from the inside. There's probably another one on the other side of the planet or something. And if not, blow that planet up. <laughs> Find another one. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah. Uh, i got some reviews here from people who have written in. Okay, I love it. On hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Uh, it's from David says, The Rise of Skywalker was just okay. It didn't feel weighty enough for an end of a nine-film saga. Good moments in an otherwise super, super predictable film. Alex says, uh, The Rise of Skywalker was good, great in parts, but it's difficult to overlook those moments of fan service that made me sigh in the cinema. Uh, Mike says, As a fan of Seven and Eight, I went into The Rise of Skywalker cautiously optimistic. As a fan of J.J. Abrams' work, I expected at least a serviceable completion to the Skywalker saga. I was let down. Worst movie ever. Uh, The True Mad Hatter says, I understand that some may not like it due to the plot points and some unexpected outcomes. I loved it. Absolutely best movie ever. It fulfilled my two requirements. Wrap up nine movies and be entertained. Uh, Danny says, it's like a bad roller coaster. It lacks the excitement and just shakes you around till you're dizzy and confused, wondering when it will finally end. A couple more. Luke says... Found Rise of Skywalker disappointing. Didn't seem like Abrams had a story he wanted to tell. Just a collage of scenes he thought Star Wars fans would uh, think are cool regardless if they make sense or fit together. Worst movie ever. And uh, Armageddon says, loved The Rise of Skywalker. So many great fan service moments. Ray was amazing and a fitting end to the saga. Can't wait to see it again. So there you go. I, that's, I try to get a, a mix of in, indicative of what people sent through. So mm. anyway, I'm curious... Uh, if people want to leave a comment or hit us up on Twitter of what they think, I'm genuinely interested to know, like, where does this rank? What does it compare to the other mm. ones? How does it compare as a third film in, in a Star Wars trilogy? Uh, is it better than the movie Solo? Oh, good question. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. I think they're about the same. How dare you? Yeah. They should have had Alden Einreich's ghost on that bridge with Kylo Ren. Who yeah. are you? <laughs> I'm your dad. I'm your dad from... <laughs> you saw a photo of me once. Sorry, a holocron or something <laughs> of me. And that, that's... you can. I mean, you've got a lot of water in your brain right <laughs> now. So that's why... You've been stabbed. This is what's yeah. happening here. I don't, yeah. haven't looked like this in a while. Yeah. Also, we could, the Harrison Ford w- wouldn't do it. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm But I'm, I've been blacklisted because of Solo. So this is all I can do now is... Is is uh, is cameos in Star Wars movies? Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So this has worked out badly for me. <laughs> Anyways, you know what's time for? Oh, is it time for what we reading? What we gonna read? Oh, I should put that fucking theme. Yeah, song put a theme in. Yeah. I'm doing the theme. We're just talking off air, but let's do this here. <laughs> I really enjoyed that discussion because I think with a lot of movies, that's I don't have that much to say. And it's nice to be able to... I think that's really interesting when you can get a movie that you can really kind of dig into. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yes, I agree. Yeah, that's, I, 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 know, I really enjoyed that. I yes. wish more movies would be interesting. It's my Me point. Me too. That'd be nice. <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, as we've been doing for what we're reading, what we're going to read for the past nine or so weeks, uh, we've been talking about The Watchmen. I mean, our famous segment. Who, who watches the TV show Watchmen? Yeah. Parentheses. <laughs> James and Maso Asterisk, Weekly Planet Podcast. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to talk anyway, about... Anyway, finales are difficult, aren't they? <laughs> they certainly are. Some are better than others. <laughs> yes. For Watchmen, it turns mm. out. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the comic, which also wrapped up as a oh, sequel to Doomsday Watchmen. Doomsday Clock. Doomsday Clock. Uh, and also the TV show. Um, spoilers for both. Yes. There are time codes if you do want to skip ahead. Where, where, where are you at? With, well, let's do the comic. Do you want to do the comic first? Okay. 
So okay, so look if you if without spoiling anything for a moment, if you if you Doomsday Clock, the sort of sequel to the Watchmen comic book from the eighties, has been building up to in this final issue a confrontation between Doctor Manhattan, the omnipotent being from the Watchmen universe, and Superman, you know the the, the ultimate iconic hero from the DC Comics universe. And what what is going to happen? What is going to happen? Not a lot, it turns out. Almost nothing. They didn't even fight. Yeah. <laughs> Did you want them to fight? Not really. Not really. But I was expecting some sort of epic conversation at the very least. Yeah. You know, I you know, uh, pure omnipotent logic versus you know heart. Heart. Exactly. We didn't really get anything. Yeah. He's just like Superman's. Just like did the right thing. Why are you doing this? You're sad about a girl? And he's like, I am sad about a girl. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. I guess I'll stop all this relentless destruction of your timeline for no reason. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And then he kidnaps a child and raises it as his own because to give his world to Superman. Is that what happened? That's what happens at the end. Why has he got the Watchman thing on his head? I thought it was like him that he made one or something. I think that's the kid he stole from the marionette and the mime. Oh, yeah. I, look, I forgot. Yeah. I'm not right. going to lie. This has been like... Three years of this, yeah, maybe? something like that. But, look, I don't think it's terrible, but, I mean, the same week as the TV show. I mean, they're not. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, it's tough. Comics yeah. are tough. Yeah. But I think you're right. I think it would have worked better as a straight Watchmen sequel without bringing Superman into mm. it. Yeah. Yeah. He stole the baby? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he stole the kid. Shouldn't do that. Earlier Shouldn't the, do that. in the series, they're like, where's my baby? And they're like, no one knows what happened to your baby. Mm-hmm. Dr. Manhattan stole it. also tattooed its head. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Pretty weird, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, Mason. Anyway, Watchmen, the TV series. Oh, that's Finale. all we're going to do? I don't know. What else is there? I don't know. I guess at the end they're like Superman ties together all the universes. We know. Yeah, right? We know. We know. <laughs> <laughs> but they also, I feel like you put in a bunch of stuff that was like, so we're getting this event in 2025 and oh, this yeah. event in 20, 2030. He names all these things that they're probably going to have to do <laughs> right, at yeah. some point. Oh, and also at the end, they're like, well, um, you're, you were going to be destroyed by all these superheroes, but guess what? Here's the Legion of Superheroes and here's With the, ones the Justice that Society. Disappeared as yeah, well, a lot of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. They're back. Didn't really, didn't really have I, much I, of an impact. I, I, most of them I didn't know were gone. I'm not going to yeah. lie. <laughs> I, <didn't, laughs> I looked uh-huh. among them and I went, yeah, Wally West. Okay, he was gone. Now he's back. Now he's back. Yeah. Was he? Is he? Yeah. Lightning Lad. He was gone. Now he's back. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty. Anyway, good. how how many of them were killed in that fight? Anyway. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what a stunning conclusion. What a stunning conclusion <laughs> to this. Can't wait for it to come out in in trade paper. I would and like I to read it back it to back because you know yeah. what? it probably plays better as. One yeah, maybe, sitting, yeah, yeah. yeah. But here's the thing: I I don't want to go back right now. Yeah, I feel like know? that as well. So, so first of all, I just want to congratulate you for guessing that Ozymandias was in that statue. Oh, we're talking about Watchmen TV yeah. series. Anyway, for, anyway, finales are difficult. Yes, <laughs> didn't like it. Not as much as I thought I would, but, but it's yeah. Kudos to you. Thank you. What a fucking incredible, incredible guess. Slash, you cheated probably. How did I cheat? <laughs> no, How could I do that? I thought that was incredible. Yeah. So, what didn't you like about it? That's interesting to me. No, I, I don't know. I just feel like maybe it was more too ambiguous. More, no, not even too. Um, I actually like the ambiguity at the end. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I just felt it was kind of more anticlimactic than I thought it would be. I, I don't think it was the best episode in the series. No, if that's what you, you yeah. mean. I think that my, well, maybe the Hood of Justice episode. Might yeah, that be was the best terrific. Episode. Yeah. Um, well, even the last episode, I thought was really good. Yeah. Prior yeah, to yeah. this, yeah. Mm. Again, it, it has been a very good series, and yes. so maybe I'm just a little bit underwhelmed over. Yeah. You know, it, it all things have to end, and it can't, it can't end perfectly. So. Yeah. You know. Uh, things I did enjoy, uh, I enjoyed the senator being reduced to a to a um, fridge full of goop. That was I funny. like how he had the Dr. Manhattan pants. Yes, right. And I think he did it because he has a weird dick. <laughs> there you go. All right. Because you'd just do it nude, wouldn't you? Yeah. If you're really doing Manhattan. Yeah, you'd do it nude. You'd do it you? at nude. Yeah, you're doing it nude. That's true. I would have done it nude yeah, is what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First, oh, no, you know what? I wouldn't have gotten that weird fridge. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell I mean, you that what, much. what he probably was planning on doing was he was planning on Becoming Dr. Manhattan. Changing his dog. Yeah, yeah, changing his dog. But getting them the incredible Dr. Manhattan powers and before doing anything else, changing his dog, then being like, well, it's time to get rid of these underpants and show everybody my normal, my normal dick that I've had the whole time, my whole life. <laughs> call me dong to man. Call me normal dong to Manhattan. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, Dr. Manhattan. Because we're, st- we're the full suit then. 
Yeah, right. Why? Yeah. Why do the yeah, just, just wear the, your normal the clothes? Yeah. Anyway, that's just a thought I had. Yeah, you're right. Look, there were a lot of dongs in this, and there so maybe dongs. that's why I was thinking about dongs. Yeah. It was Dong City. You know, a lot of time in it was Sperm City also it certainly was. A yeah. lot of times in shows, I know this, they did this for like Hodor, and they do it in other shows. Uh-huh. They'll fake dong a person. Oh, what does like, that Because then they can. Make, put makeup on it because I oh, guess yeah, it's kind of it. weird if you're actually painting somebody's dong. Oh, so that's a Doctor Manhattan's dong is a fake dong. I don't know. Okay, right. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe not. Okay. All right. It's a pretty good one. <laughs> I think you should be happy with it, but you know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, that's enough dong talk, I guess, yeah. for now. I guess we could talk the plot. <laughs> uh, what about Ozzy Mandius getting hit in the head with a wrench and going to jail for crimes? I'm okay with that. Yeah. But again, in a in a real world situ- situation, if you hit somebody in the back of the head with a wrench, they'll yeah. just die. This isn't the real world, Mason. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Except, well, it is, except for that one thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing, yeah. I guess. Also, you know what I found odd is that Ozzy Mandius's plan. He spent ten years away, and his plan ultimately become to stop Lady True just becomes drop a bunch of frozen. Well, I, I think he was fish, improvising essentially. Yeah, no, it's true. He was. Yeah. yeah. But also, they were very varied in how deadly they were. They'd go like through one your guy, hand, they'd go through your hand, but they'd also, if you stood in a, if a you booth. stood in a, a booth, you'd be fine. Yeah. Well, everybody, all the police who were caught in the in the, just got in their cars or whatever. They just got in their cars and they were fine. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think it was emotionally satisfying though for me, and I th- I feel like leftovers is the same way. There's a ambiguity kind of yeah. to it, and uh-huh. what's real and what's not. Mm-hmm. But I, I like that he'd set up that, you know, I think she's got powers. I think... Uh, you think, I don't, I don't, you I, think uh, Angela has yes. powers? I don't think it matters whether or not we know that. Yeah. The fact that she, he was like, I need you to see me walking on water. I need you to see me do this. Yeah. And he gives the, the egg clue. That's... I mean, but I don't also think it necessarily matters. But you do want to give it to somebody who doesn't want it. And there is or is not... But then if, you wouldn't eat it. I wouldn't eat it. Would you eat there that? There is or is not going to be a second season. I wonder. Not. Well, not from Damon Lindelof at this yeah, point. Right, he okay. was like, I don't want to do it. I've got a pitch for you for a second season. Hang on. Uh, the egg... Would you? So you wouldn't eat the egg? No. I don't want to uh, experience time. No, all at here's once. the thing though. Also, I feel like I feel like I wonder because the 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 premise is that you know the the senator wants to take Doctor Manhattan's powers, you know, to to change his dong, to change his <laughs> dong, and then like you know create a future for the white race or whatever. Mm. And Lady True wants to create it so she can fix all the problems in the world. I feel like Doctor Manhattan can't do that. Like the when you get the abilities, yeah. you lose interest in doing that. I One feel of the like. things he does in Superman is he wipes out the nukes. Yeah, yeah. But I feel that that yeah, I feel that he needed. Well, that's the thing. He needed yeah. to. He needed to deconstruct an entire multiverse yeah. and put it back together before he went. Oh, maybe I should do yeah. some good. Like I feel like Doctor Manhattan in the comic books has always been like, it doesn't matter to me what happens on Earth. Yes. Like it. 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 Yeah. I'm. I'm made it to a higher order of life, mm. and it doesn't matter. Ultimately, I'm interested in maybe finding a woman that I'm in love with or yeah. whatever. That's my that's my only goal. The rest of the world can jump in a bloody lake. Yeah. You know, so I, I feel like maybe even if either of those two did gain the powers, yeah. they'd just be like, I don't care anymore. Yeah, Are you, I think it's, yeah, I don't think it's that you can't do it. I think, like you said, like he can yeah. watch the neurons firing in your brain. You yeah. know what I mean? Like there's mm-hmm. the amount of, like he can watch a person age in real time. Is bloody got bloody microscopic? Vision? I mean, he does, but... Yeah, he does. Yeah, he yeah, can yeah. see, like, atoms shifting yeah, and changing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, right. What does he say? There's the same amount, of, same amount of matter in a dead body as a living body. It's mm-hmm. no difference to him. So, yeah, I think it would be like, why would you bother? Uh-huh. But I think you'd give it... If you gave it to somebody compassionate, yeah. then maybe there's a chance that they would do that. Maybe you wouldn't yeah, use it. Yeah, right. Maybe you'd use some of the powers. Maybe he didn't give all of his powers. Maybe he gave just, like, the cool stuff, but not the weird, yeah. omnipotent shit. You maybe know what I mean? that's true, yeah. You know, so... And, I, and I, you know, I like the idea that... He spent, you know, ten years in a relationship with this person, so he, you know, he he trusts them and she trusts him, yeah. And and you know, she he's shown her the way in so many ways that that you know, Lady True and this senator haven't seen, yeah. so they wouldn't know what to do with the powers yeah. once they got them anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, you have a pitch for season two. Yeah, and also maybe he's doing back blackface. He is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I liked how was, they called yeah, that out that, that episode. Well, that's true, but it's quite handy that. It, it was quite handily done yeah. in the sense that the when when we see Dr. Manhattan in the past... They don't show They him. never show his yeah. face. And so when he and when he changes from Cal back to Dr. Manhattan, they go, oh, you've, you've changed. Yeah, and it's so not weird. It's not a weird It's not weird. They don't, I mean, it's they don't, still weird. They don't make him a weird, generic yeah. Dr. Manhattan white guy okay. again because that would be weird. One of the things that they decided not to work in, he was only mentioned in passing, was Night Owl because he's in prison. Yeah, right. right. And oh, my, my apologies. It turns out they did mass-produce the, the, the owl ships. 
Oh, whatever. Yeah, you also said something. You also said the lady true was the bad guy. And I think I said no. So you got okay. more. Let's you're, uh-huh. you're, you're two for one. So and I said that it. he was in the statue. You, and I mean, in the that's statue. worse, Ted, isn't it? Oh my god! It's just they. You just, must have just when he got in that yeah. thing. Yeah, spra- you must have just I'm freaked like, out. Oh, I wonder what he's. Oh, <laughs> he's in gold. I like how she left him in there for a while as yeah, well. Yeah, right. That's uh-huh. good. But okay, so I think you could do a series. You take, you do it completely differently, and you could even set it as a sequel or a sequel. You do Night Owl in prison. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's cool. And you make it a show centered just around that. And you make it a sitcom. Sure. <laughs> but, like, I think it doesn't have to be a world-ending cataclysmic Dr. Manhattan yeah. whatever thing. Uh-huh. You don't want to see what Night Owl's doing? Yeah. I mean, I do. Yeah. So I think it doesn't have to be a sequel. Do a, do a spin-off. Do it like a Before Watchmen is a spin-off or whatever. Do it, do it like that. It's just a thought. I, I have no other th- – I, I don't know how to make it any better than that. Yeah, no, that's cool. <laughs> but um, – uh, did you, have you been catching up on the 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 uh, PTpedia files? Oh, he's the um he's the slippery man. He's clearly yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, it was it was hinted at talking about uh, Night Owl. There's the, one of the files from a couple of weeks ago was that uh, Laurie Blake is captured initially because her and I think Night Owl stopped Timothy McVeigh, the Oklahoma Oklahoma City bomber, yeah, right. and then by killing him. Yes, and then then they get captured. But anyway, and that's why he's in prison. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so there was a. Pr- in I think it might have been the last week's episode, Ozzy Mandy's at the end when he's in prison. He's reading a novel called a book called Fog Dancing, mm. and in the Watchmen universe, it's a book about identity that in, that sort of inspired a lot of different people to become costumed. Right. Okay. Was this uh, pre Manhattan as well? Or yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but in in one of the PDPedia files for that week, he mentions that he. Was, he was part of an essay when he was in school. He did an essay competition on that book, and it came in last. His essay came in last place, and it shamed him forever, and it uh, kind of set him on this weird path. Uh, and yeah, in in the final PDpedia, it's a termination letter from the FBI because he decided to remain in Tulsa and right. just keep investigating this thing because yeah. it's all been blacked out and what have you. And it's the only thing he cares about. Really. It's the only yeah. thing he cares about. And yeah, so. So, uh, yeah, and so it's like, does anybody want this anything from his office? There's all this w- canola oil. <laughs> That's anybody, great, yeah. yeah. And I it, love that stunt. Yeah. Apparently they did it for real. There you go. And it makes sense because in that episode, the lube man sees Angela dispose of, I think, the wheelchair parts. Right. And then all of a sudden, Laurie Blake knows uh, about it. Okay, so right. in, in retrospect, you go, oh, of course. Yeah. He's, he is feeding it. He was doing the lube man situation. I kind of hoped he would show up at the end. Maybe <laughs> that's why I'm disappointed. I kind of wish that there was a moment. It's that kind of, you know, why didn't they shoot uh, Ant-Man up Thanos' butt kind of yeah. thing where you're like, well, that would be dumb, obviously, and it would ruin. That's not, this isn't dumb. I don't no. think him showing up is dumb. Yeah, but yeah. I, and, and, you know, you'd go, well, you know, it'd make, it's, it would kind of ruin the magic if, it you know, that actually happened because it's too silly. But I'm like, I kind of was hoping that Ozymandias' plan would fail yes. or to some degree and it was still going to happen, And but there was just a really narrow crevice. <laughs> if only there was somebody who could slip through and flip a switch and then Lube Man shows up and he didn't. Maybe that's why I was I don't a think you need down. to do it that necessarily, but maybe you could do him like running from the from the squids. Yeah, you right, see him maybe. slip into a drain yeah, again. Yeah, 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 <laughs> for sure, yeah. Oh, that'd be good. That'd be good. Uh, uh, anyway, that's the end of Watchmen talk, I guess. Yeah, for I guess the, so, Forever. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I just wanted to quickly talk about The Witcher I started watching on Netflix. Ah, for a new segment. Yes. Who watches The Witcher? Hot parentheses, the TV series The Witcher. Not parentheses, the games, James. Like, and, yeah. Yeah. Have you? No, no, yeah. it's on my list now. Okay, it's more, it's more kind Weekly of... Weekly Planet Podcast. Yes. Yep. It's more kind of... Uh, Sword and sorcery kind of Merlin-y stuff than it is Game of Thrones. Well, because there was a more... It's more schlocky, but high yeah. high um, budget kind of thing. Okay. Like, the fight does, scenes are amazing. It does look a bit... Mm. Like, we've talked about Mandalorian being a bit Xena yeah. Warrior Princess. It does feel a bit... It's a, it's definitely darker than that. Okay. But, look, I've never played the games, and I know I need to. I think I'm going to get the Switch copy. Because you've read the books? I've, no, that was, <laughs> yes, Mason, because I've read all of those books. Uh-huh. But I think there is... Like, it's more kind of schlock fun than... Like, I'm not loving it, and it's a bit like, and you're the, the queen is the son of the whatever, and this person's related to this the person. The queen's the son? Yeah, whatever. Oh, and this, my God, and this, this is very progressive. this person's secretly a dragon or whatever the fuck. So there's a lot of that. So, like, and also every princess in this seems to have secret magic or is secretly a monster. And a lot of the monsters are like, they're like, Henry Cavill kill this monster. He's like, this isn't a monster. This is actually a, a curse, and I, I won't kill this monster, even though it's my job to kill a monster. And they're like, well, kill this human. He's like, ah, oh, okay. 
Because <laughs> humans are the monsters or whatever. Yeah. It's like that's, it's well, that here's kind of the thing, thing. because the, the most recent trailer for this, mm. which I watched, I remember thinking, I don't know a lot about The Witcher, but I know he's a monster hunter. And the most recent trailer had no monsters in it. It was just... Oh, there's plenty of monsters in okay, it. Okay, right. Yeah. And right. He do, there, were, there are monsters that he kills. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, just... um. Okay. It's Don't... If you think it's Game of Thrones, it's not going to be Game of Thrones. It's more, okay. yeah. But right. uh, so far, it's like, it's something that I put on while doing other things. Which I feel like it's doing it a disservice because it's very expensive. I bet, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how is, A, his abs? Terrific. He looks Terrific great. Abs, and he's good in it. He's kind of yeah. gruff and over the top. Yeah, I'm going to watch it because I do like yeah. Henry Cat. Does it seem like he's having fun? Yes. Is he too great? 100%. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, what's, what's his magic like? He's sort is of... Is it very vague video yeah, game kind of magic? Not, he's not like summoning lightning magic. But he's doing like force pushes Yeah, he'll push and his eyes change colour and, oh. and a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got a uh, potion. Yeah. That, uh, if you know the video game, you probably know exactly what it is, but I'm like, I don't know what that is at all. Okay, right. They probably explained it and I looked away. But uh, yeah, look, it's, you know... <laughs> I think if you probably like The Witcher, actually, I'm curious if you love The Witcher, is this like is, is this accurate what you want? to The Witcher? Yeah, because yeah. yeah, uh-huh. I'd say it probably is, but yeah, right. I don't know because I've only mm. read the books as you mentioned. Yes, all seven to nine of them. Let's look it up. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, is this guy it's who knows everything about The Witcher? Correct. Okay, like I know what that potion is that he's drinking, but uh, I don't need to explain it to a super to the super fans. No, that's true. They already know, don't they? <laughs> There's eight. So you were right. Yeah, I know I was, Mason. <laughs> when I said seven to nine, what's the exact number in the middle of that? Eight books, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. God. Do you want to talk about The Mandalorian? Uh, yeah, it was good. It was, um, <laughs> they brought the team together, which is what yeah, I said. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. They would, do you think I was Nick, hoping they would do it. Do you I think Nick say. Nolte's dead for good? In real life? Yeah. Yeah. I think he's been dead for years. <laughs> what about in the TV series? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think he's dead. Okay, right. Was there okay. smoke coming off his body? Yeah. Then yes, he's dead. Okay, right. Yeah. Is that a universal symbol in, in Star Wars? Continuity. Generally, yes, I okay, want right. to say. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, you got to kill someone in this important. That's true, yeah. And people like him. Mm. I think IG-11 is going to save them because they're like, he's not programmed to fight, but he's programmed to defend. So yeah, we're going to sure. get some uh-huh. uh, sweet How IG-11. many episodes are left? One, I think. Oh, it's an eight-episode eight, eight episode season. Okay. Might be wrong. But, uh, it's cool and fun. Yeah. That's us. That's who watches the, Mandal- who watches the Mandalorian season episode seven. <laughs> By James and Maso, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. You nailed it. Did I? No. <laughs> Imagine if you had. No, I won't. You could fix it later in post. I'd I never could. know. Well, I'll do a follow-up podcast like the episode nine and I'll fix everything in this one. Yeah, good. Yeah. good. I'll write As all the As if this one never existed. That's right. Uh, do you know what it's time for is then, Is it time Mason? for letters? No, it is. Letters. Letters. It's loading. The classic one was letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day. Right now, we're going to do that. Now, the two tweets that I covered, which you can send in with hashtag weekly planet pod, one from Joe, we talked about Star Wars trilogies. The other is from Dennis, where we talked about um, Kylo and Ray and what that relationship could mean to their lineage. Mm. Joe won't spoil here because we're, we're out of the spoilers. But uh, so we've covered those already. Yes. But I do have a question relating to another thing. Okay. Um, and I feel like this is really my area. But John Lombardo says, with all the buttons and control panels in trams, they only drive in two <laughs> directions. Um, I could drive a tram. I Yeah, you could drive a tram. Yeah. Yes, is what I'm Into saying. Into a bloody car, mate. <laughs> bloody wall. <laughs> what's luck with, to you. What's with all the buttons, though? Uh, transponders. I know you got your brake yep. and you got your forwards and your backwards. Yep. And you Sand can, button. Sand button. Obviously. Like, what What do they all be doing? Uh, uh, battery power. Mm? Uh, uh, pantograph up and down. Yep. Uh, power limit switches. You got... Uh, Windows? Power windows. For you. I mean, there's windows, but they're not power windows. Uh, windscreen wipers, obviously. Yep. Okay. The water spray thing. You know. So car stuff. <laughs> yeah, car, it's car stuff. You've Except been in a car, sand. it's similar. No steering wheel, though. Yeah. yeah. My car doesn't have a sand button. That's true. Yeah, I'm going to get yeah, that installed. That's right. Like Vin Gong, Diesel. obviously. Gong, it yeah. says gong on it. Gong. What yeah, does it gong. do? Ding. That's not a gong. I know. <laughs> it should go boom. And then like that's... Is it right yeah, that makes out? more sense to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, well, that's yeah. I was curious, and I thought you might be uh, be able to answer. Also that. curious. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um. So we also can you can send in an email to weeklyplanetpod at gmail dot That's true. Yeah. 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 We're gonna have next week our best and worst of the year. Yeah. I think Collings, like last year, will probably put some polls up for some things mm-hmm. you can vote for. We give out our weekly planet awards. That's right. Come along. They mean nothing, and no one's ever acknowledged one. But and what you, if they did? And you won't like it. That's right. <laughs> 
And oftentimes we have different answers. Yeah. And we just spe- we just we just spin our wheels for a bit. It's a grand old Sometimes time. Sometimes we can't remember if we've seen the things we're talking about. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> you're gonna be, you're not gonna like it. To- <laughs> Yeah, you'll hate it. Whoever's <laughs> listening to this, you'll hate it. What do you? Uh, what do Sometimes you there's a category, and we haven't we haven't watched anything we in it. We didn't think about it. We just didn't watch it. But we'll pick a winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't yeah, even yeah. matter. We'll pick a winner. We'll pick a winner. Yeah, I have a new award for this for this oh, coming up. It. I'll see that's up here. I'll, uh, do you want to shoot it my way? And I'll. Uh, no, I'll oh, you want to keep it a secret? I'll keep it a secret. Okay. I thought you wanted to send it out to the people. No, no, you right wanted now. just for you. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, great. Forward to that. Yeah, but again, you people will be excited to. Um, our, our best award, I feel, again, is the Gamers On Award. The, the award for the most ham-fisted attempt to build a franchise or a sequel based yes. on one terrible movie. So It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, so who, who will it be this year? I've got a couple of ideas. Yeah, me too. It's not as definitive as last year, though. Yeah. The Predator. Anyway, what have you got in terms of letters? <laughs> uh, this is from Kurt Reitmeier. Hi, Kurt Reitmeier. Does the answer to the Snyder Cut. Um, I was listening to a conversation again about the Snyder Cut again. Uh, then it dawned on me, why doesn't Warner Brothers just get it animated instead of worrying about releasing what they filmed? Not a bad idea. That's a that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, WB's animation is good, that's true. Animation is cheaper than trying to compile it from a half-film script. Uh, he says, either way, I don't really care, but it's just a thought. <laughs> this might be a way well, people can stop asking for it. I think that's We should true. get this guy on the podcast to replace one of us if we die. Yeah, right. That's the perfect response. Yeah. Look, I, I don't care, I don't but care. I'll talk about it. <laughs> I'll ask the correct questions, but I do not care. Uh, uh, maybe that's true. Uh, some people have also floated uh, trade paper, like comic book version. Yeah. So they give us a, give us a comic book Snyder I'd Cut. I prefer animated. I feel. I think I'd prefer yeah. comic book. Yeah, right. Okay. If you get, but not. I would want some like real A list kind of. So not me. To draw it. Yeah. I mean, I'm an A list podcaster and YouTuber. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, that's yeah. not what you're looking for. No, more an A list comic book <laughs> artist. <laughs> okay. It's more what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's more your speed. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, I was going to suggest uh, Lanel Yu, who's uh, he terrific choice uh, to follow up on something uh, that we asked many weeks ago, mm. because he did the art for Ultimate Wolverine versus Hulk. Oh, to yeah, answer what? that question that we, people we we ask every time it comes up, did yes, they did finish it. Thank God. Yeah, right. Now they I can't been, wait till we forget again. Yeah, right. We ask I'm excited too. Videos. And they'll be like, you even mentioned that they finished it on. <laughs> Here's that the clip. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Do you have a tweet there? You know I do, Mason. Yeah, right. I did them already. What's another letter? I don't know. I've done them all. I had three. Oh, okay, cool. All right, let's them, find yeah. another letter. Mm. This is from Sterling Glick. It says, hello. Hello, uh, Sterling Glick. He says, why do you guys only say bad things about good movies and good things about bad movies? You'll start by saying you liked a movie, then point out the weaker parts or say a movie was bad, but list its redeeming qualities. Not a problem, but just curious. I think it's because nothing's perfect. Nothing's perfect. And yeah. uh, I, yeah. I, I, you can, you know, criticise the things you like. Also, we've got to fill an hour or whatever. I don't <laughs> That's know. true. What do you want? That is very true. <laughs> No, James, if you die, I'm replacing you with you because you've got just the right attitude. <laughs> I think I don't be know. We're going to fill an hour. <laughs> I think you do really well. <laughs> but no, I think that, you know that's uh, Patrick Willems did a did a video this week. Yeah. On it was basically the best pretty good movies of the year, and that's something we talk about a lot. Yeah. That a lot of movies are fine. Yes. Yeah. Or even Which, that's where at the origin of our rating system comes from yeah it's not a real rating system because uh-huh. there's no nuance to it and it makes no sense right. but that's the general consensus and it can be changed with a one sentence from the other guy <laughs> exactly like this was the worst movie ever yeah but what about when he fell out that window <laughs> oh yeah it's the best movie ever so <laughs> yeah that's yeah. essentially it yeah so yeah I, I i appreciate that even if it's a and you know it ultimately it it doesn't matter, especially in the in this era, you know, where we can stream anything. Mm. If you think that this movie, you know, if you think this Star Wars movie sucks, but that scene with Ray and Poe and Finn yeah. was so funny and and yeah. just a just a beautiful moment bet- between characters and actors, yes. you can just watch it over and over again. Yeah. You know, it's and also I feel like not all criticisms are weighted equally. So things that I don't like about a movie, uh-huh. then not, doesn't mean I hate that bit. It just means I didn't like it as much as another bit necessarily yeah. and mm. you know and then you moved on and other times a criticism can be like well this was actually quite significant and negated my enjoyment of this movie you know what yeah I mean? so, right, right. Mm. i don't know i guess we're just talking we're yeah. just talking we're just, <laughs> we're just talking yeah this is from urban uh, gutierrez mm. i'm in the hospital it says i wonder if we caused this let's find <laughs> out because we've done it before and we'll do it again we'll do it again <laughs> Uh, hey guys, so I've been caught up uh, with an ear infection, having a hard time making time go by fast. So I've been listening to my favorite episodes. To help me get through this. Thank you. Ah, uh, thank you. 
Now, question with the new Star Wars out, do you think better or worse if J.J. Abrams were to connect the Rise of Skywalker to the Cloverfield franchise? <laughs> Does it? Uh, he says, I know this wouldn't happen, but would love for you to guys to discuss this. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they've, he snuck yeah, in. Snuck, a, oh, he snuck a Cloverfield a slurpo, monster in. Whatever. A slurm. Do you think there's any slurm? Because he can't, in there's nothing Arborish, re- Sorry? You could do it in that Star Wars language or whatever. Oh, I see. So it wouldn't be, it wouldn't yeah. say slurm on it. Is it slurm? It's well, they don't have English. I don't, know. I don't know. Slurm's <laughs> from Futurama. <laughs> yes. But um, you, I remember a few of yours when we talked about The Force Awakens was when they were landing on that planet at the end where Luke was. The cinema you, would collapse on Yeah, you. cinema would collapse. Yeah. yeah. You barely made it out of alive of that cinema that didn't collapse. That's right. You were like, oh my God, they're going to bring this to earth. They're going to bring us into this, <laughs> into this thing. Right. So I guess from that perspective, I don't want it definitively. I like little Easter eggs like, yeah. you know, the R2-D2 or a Carved, it's carved into the wall of an Indiana Jones movie and yeah, stuff like right. that. You know what I mean? Did but that happen? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in Resident Evil Stark, yeah. Cool. Nice. Sorry. Last Crusade. There we go. But, uh, and there's like Club Obi-Wan or whatever, which doesn't yeah, mean anything. Yeah, right, right, right. It doesn't mean anything. But yeah. So no, uh, I think he's probably, like you said, he's probably tangentially linked it, but no, I would not like that. As someone who's like, nothing matters, I definitively wouldn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because then it becomes not just a Star Wars thing, it's forever a bad robot Oh my God. Thing, you know what, what, if, I mean? what if it was a scene like they have to fight... What what do you think the reaction to the audience would be of the audience would be if if there was some sort of rancor pit situation like mm. one of the heroes falls into a pit and they they have to fight a Cloverfield monster? Bad, bad. You think bad. The audience would hate it. I think some uh, people would love no, it. No, maybe not. I think that's not as bad as because like, it did happen in the universe. Yes. So maybe they came from that universe. So that mm. to me is not as bad as like an X wing crashes into the Statue of Liberty in the background of. The movie Cloverfield or whatever. Yeah, you know what right, I mean? That's right, the right. stuff that I'm not really keen on. Uh-huh. Yeah. Is that'll do it then? Yeah. It's pretty long. We can wrap it up. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, this is one. This, this is an idea. So let's put sure. it Let's put it on the block so we remember it and people can remind us of it. This is from Dylan Dutton. It says, hi, James and Mason. My name is Dylan. We know Dylan. It's in the... I've Dylan. been a listener since 2017. I'm a huge fan of the show and was wondering if you guys would ever do an episode on best worst comic book movie concept art. Personal oh, okay. favourites of mine are the Dark Knight Joker and the uh, Infinity War Iron Spider. Thanks, guys. I think that would be a good one to do if in a video. I was going to say if we ever start filming it, even. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. And we could yeah. edit them in. But yeah, yeah, I would love to do that. Let's do that. Because it doesn't always align, but um, there's some interesting yeah. ideas. And yeah. I'll, if we did it on audio, it would be a lot of us going. So it looks like this. Oh, yeah. Ooh, That's pretty it's good. It's just us, at two hours of us badly describing concept yes. art. It'd be great. It'd just be, um, so you know the you know the Iron Spider they did put in Infinity War? It yeah. looks a bit like that. It's a bit like that, but it's more like the comic book version of it. Yeah, Iron it's got Spider. different, different yeah. arms. Different yeah, no, arms I like that it. though. It's a, good, yeah. it's a good, put it on the pile of Put it stuff. on the pile. That's the show though, Mason. Put the, the show on the pile. Put the show on the pile. Boy, Another finales are difficult, pile. aren't they? Boy, are they. <laughs> yes. What do you got for oh us to wrap up? Oh my goodness. Thank you everybody for listening. Thank you everybody for subscribing and bloody uh, telling a friend, which is mm. how we get new listeners, which is always nice. Yes, uh, it is. And uh, thank you for leaving some nice reviews, which is another way we get new listeners. James, it do you have a nice is. review? It gets is it us a up way there that the... we get to... It is, because okay. it gets us up there in the iTunes oh, ranking. Okay, this is from fine. Alan7. Here's a five-star review. Ooh. Since I have a five-star review, as requested, can I get a mad ghost shout-out? A ghost! Very good. It can be as simple as that. This one's is from <laughs> me, me, bigger boy. says, this podcast is good. Call my friend Le- Leah a loser. It's up to you. We, we don't know Leah. But, um, Sounds like a loser, though. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, based on the I would never say that. Yeah, based on the description <laughs> that's been given, seems like a loser. Yeah. While you're describing the rest, I'm going to stop my dog from barking incessantly. Incredible. So you keep going. Okie dokie. Yeah. If you would like to get in contact with us, you can go to Weekly Planet Port on Facebook, at Gmail, at Twitter, and Bandcamp. This only really works when I'm looking at you, so this is actually quite difficult. Uh, my frame of reference has been ruined. Uh, you can also go to planetbroadcasting.com. Uh, you can uh, sign up to our newsletter and you can buy the great Rob Collins. You can also look at all the other great podcasts on the Planet Broadcasting Network, including a new one, which might be debuting pretty soon. We can't tell you about oh, it. Oh, we can't tell you about it yet. let's just say, hey. oh, maybe we can. You know what? I better not. Yeah, you better clear. not. Claire will yell at us. <laughs> yeah. If you'd like to get in... Oh, did I do contact? I think I did. Maybe. I did. We you can also earlier. go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group mm-hmm. where you can have civil fun discussions on all kinds of pop culture and podcast 
topics. Topics. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies if you'd like to chuck in a buck. We are going to start filming stuff pretty soon. Yeah, we soon. keep saying that. We keep saying it. Yeah. The things are slowly <laughs> slowly moving. We're slowly get, progressing. Don't you worry, we'll get to it. But a man, a man, imagine if we had a whole bunch more money. You would love you that. really, yes, <laughs> we'd really get that studio going. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And our bank account's going. That's more important than anything. <laughs> <laughs> so may. Yeah, you can also go to the Amazon affiliate link in our episode description. Yes. Uh, if you want to buy, if you want to pre-order The Rise of Skywalker on DVD. Which you can do. Yeah. Already. Well, yeah. All right. Do that, do that through Or the nine saga box set yeah. thing that they're releasing. So it's got Hayden Christian on one side and sad Hayden Christensen <laughs> on the other side. Modern day. Oh, I should have said Jake. Should have said Jake Lloyd. That's sadder. That's that's good. That's a good joke. <laughs> it's sad, but it's a really good joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, we've got some t-shirts on tpublic.com. <laughs> Just search for the Weekly Planet. Uh, yep. thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Rack and Prawl Amy's cool yeah, themes. Man. Thanks everybody for emailing in and uh, and uh, saying hello if you see us in real life. That's right, yeah, we don't mind at all. Yeah. Uh, next week, the awards. Yeah, next week, the awards. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Absolutely. Shout out to Riley as well, who you mentioned last week, who lost his wife. He was at the uh, the, the screening I saw of Star Wars. There you go. Which yeah, was that's super right. cool to see him. And, uh, yes. And, and he was there with his kids, which was really nice. So, uh, and of course, and David and Ali, who are also there. Oh, Alison, sorry. Oh, did, was it, is it Ali for sure? I don't want to. I shouldn't jump to those conclusions. What are you talking about? You've met them. Nice. Yeah, yeah, you know them. Yeah. <laughs> I love them. You know exactly who they are. That's right. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Next week, best of something. Uh, grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.